Yeah. Okay, tell me if yeah, I'm thanks. coming on. I started streaming. Oh, started early. Well, is how many? It's not that early. No, oh, I guess it's six minutes. Are we going to go over Eric's thing and and Henry's bracelet tonight? And, We're definitely uh, not going over Henry's bracelet. Oh, why not? It looks pretty cool, man. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's just it's not just ready not for prime time. Public. <laughs> Wait, it's just the mesh isn't going to make a ton of sense. Oh, yeah. fine. No, so super cool. Hello, everyone. I'm just about not to start or introduce or anything. Hey. Uh, yeah, you're live. Yes, yes. I'm live. We're there. Woohoo! There's. All right. Look at that. Um, there we go. Hello, kind Dan, gentle folk. How are we doing today? See, but here's what's weird. I'm looking at Restream, and it says we have 14 people viewing. But over here on Twitch, it says we have 21 people viewing. See, it's so confusing. So are we on YouTube and um, what's that other one thing called? Uh, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook. Facebook. Facebook, that's the other one. That's the one I was talking about. <laughs> hey, soy feed me. How you doing? All right. Are am I really echoey? Eric, is that me? Are we echoey? Oh. Okay. We gotta make sure we're all good. At least we're up and streaming because we changed some things in the stream stuff and. Anytime we change things on the stream stuff, it always takes me like an hour and 40 minutes to actually get to the point of streaming. I'm very competent at this game. I've only been doing it for a few years and I just, you know. <laughs> Hello, Joe. Hey, Samoth. Sammy? Summer. I'm going to say Menhyu, Menyu, Menhyu. Sorry, I can't pronounce my own name, let alone someone else's. I'm, I apologize. But hello. <laughs> All right. So tonight we're doing crits again. So it does appear that we're doing um, our little theme sculpt thing is now starting to become something of the stream so next week or next month we're probably going to be doing uh, at least one week we'll do the theme stream and then uh, we'll do crits sorry i missed you guys last week but we were snowed in and nothing i can do about that one i was not getting out and getting back in it wasn't going to happen so i didn't try <laughs> <laughs> where's the red wax where it should be elsewhere i know gadcore is going to get in here and start the red wax army again red wax Ugh, you guys kill me eric do you remember when red wax came in <laughs> okay oh no snow's all gone now that's the beautiful thing about the Pacific Northwest. I mean, we had two feet of snow. It was ridiculous. Couldn't get out because they don't plow the roads and stuff. And then three, four days later, it started raining and it's gone in a day and a half, you know. So, nope, no snow. Well, up in the mountains, there's plenty of snow because we do have real mountains, but um, not down here. I know, we did think it was cool. Well, Brian, you know, you can always come join class. And as a past student, you could probably get a pretty good deal on it. <laughs> um, oh, so we're starting with Eric. Boop. You can do it. Boop. Boop, boop, boop. Look at you go. I love it. Love it. Oh, 
that hurt? All right. Here we go. Does anyone have anything to ask or do or talk about before we start critiquing? Oh, well, now I'm not berating anyone because now it's all pre-recorded videos and then like meeting sessions, right? So there's a lot of stuff that you go through at your own pace. It's not, you're not under the pressure of uh, keeping up with the weekly class. I didn't berate you too much. Well, if you would start sculpting in layers, you wouldn't need to be berated, right? I'm just saying, there is a reason. <laughs> All right, what do we have here? We have a scorpion stash box. Oh, speaking of stash boxes, you got to stay on top of me about that. I have stuff to mail you. Um, all right, let's look at our parts here. I love you, Mr. Clever Guy. You're, is this actually a scan? of the um of the fossil or is this a um interpretation of the scan of the phala of the falafel We have over 150 videos. We're killing it. Now I, I screwed those numbers up. Uh, we have 132 videos, I think, right now. I just counted them the other day. Um, and 150 more this year. Oh, yeah. So what you're telling me is Eric has 130 videos and I have eight? Is that what I'm <laughs> <laughs> Now you have like... I have a 50. couple. Hey, that's a... All right, Eric, can you not talk? Because my little screen isn't keeping up with that. For some reason, basically. Okay. Eric's not Eric's in stream chat. I see how he is. He's going to make me look over here and. You he know, asked if you should my... jump in, and you didn't answer. I didn't see it. That's why I said my thing's not. Uh, advancing when i get off of it it doesn't advance brian talk to henry um so this is our cover let's hide it let's do it part by part and look at what we got here we got a box and some scorpions and our box okay so first thing, someone didn't use back face masking, did they? Is he, uh, is he coming over? Can you hear me? I can. I can. All right. Okay. So turn down the volume. So turn down the volume. Because I can hear myself. All right. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. And I don't hear me. I can Perfect. Hear you. Is there a way I can get this to hear you through Discord or something? Uh, you should be able to. Yeah, you yeah, should, should be hearing him only, only through Discord and not through Twitch. Uh. <laughs> okay. Can you I hear can't me? Hear anything now? I can hear you. Can you hear me? What do I, what, 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 what button do I press to hear you in Discord? Uh, it should be happening automatically. You are not deafened. No, it ain't. <laughs> Can you hear me? If, if you could hear me, then you should be able to hear him. <laughs> it sounded like you responded to me. I know. I, that's what I was thinking too. It's like, can you hear me? He's like, nope. It's like, okay, well, wait a minute. <laughs> All right, hold on a second. I got it. I got it. I got it. It's oh, he might have heard me say that on on Twitch. All right. Can you hear me? 
Yes. Okay. okay. And I can hear you. It's All right. Cool. cool. There we go. If force comes to where she might need to do uh, headphones. I'm just saying you, this doesn't look very back face masky to me. No, I just I just didn't finish doing the inside. Oh, you just blew off back face masking. Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I yeah, don't need check out the lowest, lowest subdivision levels on all those things, man. They're like all below a thousand. I'm just saying. Do that like, that'll take me five seconds to fix. It's not a big deal. Um, I was just, I mean, you know, just a little back face masking filling in there. Just. This, this is why you don't try you don't teach other teachers man. It's, it's <laughs> you're like that's easy it'll be fixed uh-huh if it's so easy why didn't you fix it huh mister <laughs> okay you Crazy can figure that. you can figure that out <laughs> um, but this side's really bad i'm just saying come on what's the bug? <laughs> um i like your little your tail legs that's a good one <laughs> <coughs> i notice a lot of people when they do scorpions they have the stingers backwards a lot of them have the stingers backwards you're very right about that yeah if you if you turn on one of the scorpion models i mean you can see how the tails work it's Right. You know, it's set up to jab into the prey with it's the maximum the velocity. That's why it's like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Looking at some sort of scorpion and it was like, backwards, man. Just like that. I'm pretty sure that was it. <laughs> I do love this piece. It's so much fun. It, it came out like, uh, it's one of those rare instances where it came out a little bit better than I thought. Mm -hmm. uh, and originally the style, I was, I was actually going to try and rip you off for the style, but I ended up ripping off Art Man Play instead. <laughs> no, I was going to say, it kind of has arty, art sort of feeling. It's definitely the, with the little, the heart, with the, the hearts around it. And I also did a lot of stuff with VDM brush. So I created a VDM brush with a big heart and all the little other hearts. Um, I think I could probably work on the tail legs a little bit more. I mean, obviously, I'm not trying to go for realistic, but like I love turn, you're the only person who puts out anatomically correct things and go, well, I'm not trying to go for realism here because I put <laughs> these little dots on them. That's not a realistic scorpion. <laughs> it's like, well, that's a realistic they scorpion. A number of those spiky things. If you look at you know the, the little, I mean the. the the, the design that you find in nature is quite fascinating because it's obviously very functional and I just kind of exaggerated it for effect to give it that kind of sort of, I don't know, that spiky punk rock kind of feel, but it's like based it. on the actual spikes that you see on that particular species. Uh, I mean, I think there is definitely, you and I definitely, well, we agree on a lot of things. But one thing we definitely agree on is doing a realistic version of the animal first. First. Yeah. Because the other thing is when you do that, you start to, that all that labor that you put in to sculpt the real animal gives you ideas. Okay. So oh, without a doubt. And what's funny is that you wind up, you can blow them out of proportion by not doing too much because like you said, nature's weirder than hell. You know, I mean, it's just like, you can't make that stuff up. Like I was talking about that, that red and black spider that dropped down at us and we all it scared the living hell out of us because i've never seen anything that was black that faded into red spikes and we were just like what in god's name is that yep and it just the fact like, that it is it the was it the spider with the big long horns coming out the side of the abdomen yeah it was crazy it was the craziest that, thing i've ever seen in my life it looked like something out of like supernatural you know that dumb demon show it, I mean, it could have been right out of, like, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It was, like, so overblown and weird and spiky. <laughs> we, we, it was probably 4 o'clock in the morning when we were coming back home from a, a, a gathering. <laughs> yeah, whatever. A gathering, yeah. Um, a gathering of hey, some hey, sort or another. <laughs> hey, Tomas. Yes, sir. We need to fix some of your OBS, OBS settings, settings real quick. Um, I think okay. you've got... Uh, Something's going wrong in OBS that's making sound uh, Eric and myself sound like we're talking from the heavens. Um, 
Should I have desktop audio turned off? No, I can't have desktop. No, because then you won't be able to hear Discord at all. But do you have desktop audio like twice? Uh, mm. Or is your input capture somehow also capturing me speaking? Okay, let's try that. Does that... Is that better? Uh, hang on, let me deafen my... I mean, I do have you playing on the TV, so it might be hearing you. I mean, I can put headphones on and turn that off. Will that solve the problem? And just get headphone ear after 13 hours of streaming. I've completely lost you now. Did I do something wrong? I can hear you. Okay, you can hear me? So it's him, not us. Yeah. Okay. okay. No, there he is. So did that make it worse, or is it better? Here. Uh, I, couldn't I couldn't hear Eric. Eric. Hold on, hold on. Let me... Where's that volume? Where's the... Does that help? Does that help the echo? Okay, so I turned off the TV and I put in a headphone. Did that solve it? No, it's not. Oh, you're right. The bar's not moving. What'd I do? How do I turn it on? Okay. Now talk. What happened? Oh. Wait, did, but it just happened, didn't it? But, it, I mean, it was just working. Well, I'm hearing whatever I'm hearing through my headphones. I don't know what it is. <clears throat> but, yeah, I can hear it through my headphones. Okay, so hold on. Audio input capture, focus right. All right, that's that. Video capture device. Okay, that's logic capture. Okay. Desktop audio properties. Um Well, this is desktop audio should be my headphones. Okay, did that help? Uh, is the bar moving again? Wait, when no, you click yeah, the okay. Bar's moving. Yep, bar's okay. moving. Okay, click OK. Close that window. And now chat. Tell us. Am I echoey though? Jeff. 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 Help me out, Jeff. <laughs> Come on, Jeff. You got to tell me, do. Jeff. Woo. Woo. All right. Okay, uh, Eric Tomas, please continue. Thank you for troubleshooting. <laughs> See, I thought I'd get away with no... Uh headphone ear but I guess that's not going to work is it I'm going to just have to deal with headphone ear okay so uh, let me ask you this so I haven't decimated this or anything like that it's still in a subdivision state mm -hmm. 
Um, in order for this thing to, I mean, obviously we can talk about the design as well, but the thing I'm most concerned about right now is, is how to get this prepped for print with all them legs and stuff, like what's going to work or what's not going to work. Well, that is the tricky point. So it comes down to how much, um, detail you want to keep. So, and I'm saying you probably want to keep this as much as possible. So I would mm -hmm. actually do the entire scorpion body and tail as one part and then pull and pin the legs, right? Um, so they have a pin and then that way you can do the legs as a separate part. Let's get in here and look at one of these groovers. So do you have these subgroup? Oh yeah, you already have these subgroup. These are fine. Yeah. So I would, I would actually break it up as you have it right here and mm -hmm. turn these into, um, you know, just have a pin. So close the whole, cause these aren't, it's still one shell, right? You, yeah. these, yeah. Um, just bring these in, close hole, you know, um, and then make a peg, use it as a cutter. And then I would do each one of these as a separate part. And then that way you can also put a pin in the bottom of the foot okay. and then you can peg it through the roof or through the, no, you can't cause you have something on the bottom side of that. Um, well you can peg it into the, the top. Yeah. I think the and, top is pretty thick. So yeah, no, there's plenty of room to peg that and, um, solder it, you know, <clears throat> and if you're going to make one out of resin, or, you know, just print one. I would just, you know, you can print them out and then um, use a UV laser to cure it in resin. Mm -hmm. And so you can have a resin version that you can paint or something like that. And so, mm -hmm. uh, we'll, I'll print this in that Tough, the new Tough 2200 or whatever it is. And we'll do a resin box of it and see how robust it is. Okay. Um, but I would peg the feet right mm -hmm. and then that way you can even have your little what are those called they're not claws there's a word toesies toesies that's <laughs> oh. the technical term <laughs> well, the, end of the foot is called the tarsus so i don't remember exactly what the little claw thing is i just call them claws yeah and then that way you can keep your little claws and it'll look as if because you can peg it you know i would probably just to um just so you have um, a little bit less there. I would probably rotate these up just a touch, you mm -hmm. know, and then that way when you, and I'm not adding a peg, I'm just going to cheat here. Um, boop. And that way when you pick, whoa. Why is it going to center? That was weird. Okay. And then that way, why isn't that working? Oh, because I'm an idiot. That's why it's not working. Stop that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when you have your peg and it's yeah. sitting at ground level, you know, you can still see your, your toesies. Gotcha. If that makes sense. And then they can be nice and light, you know, so you can actually see them kind of, I would actually have them grapple the floor, you know, your ground texture, have them wrapping around things. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah, I actually uh, haven't spent too much time fine tuning the feet just yet. But yeah, if you look at the, uh, the top of the box, the ground texture are all, valentine's hearts yeah and they can wrap around it's those called, and... that's called irony irony <laughs> isn't it ironic <laughs> no actually nothing you said is ironic <laughs> so is that the irony in the song that nothing's ironic yeah i think so i hope so otherwise i think she's a ding dong I don't know. There's been so many levels of stupid since that song came out. It doesn't even bother me anymore. <laughs> That's true. And to be fair, she married Paul There's Simon. There's been much debate about that particular thing. 
<laughs> All I can say is she married Paul Simon. She can't be that dumb. <laughs> Paul Simon probably still has P- PTSD from Carrie Fisher. Right. <laughs> I know I do. <laughs> so like the the hearts on the uh, on the box, um, like on the sides, I made them really small. Is it going to still show up as a heart or is it just going to look like like those itty bitty ones? These? Oh, no, they'll totally show up as hearts. OK, cool. Um, I would take one or two of these that are mm-hmm. like kind of floating up. It looks like they're kind of bubbling out mm-hmm. and make them almost full round. You know, have a return on a couple of them. So there's like, you know, so as they're coming yeah. out, they get a little fuller. I think that would bring this into. So you're breaking the visual graphic and you're bringing it into the 3D work because it looks like yeah. bubbles, you know, bubbling yeah. out. The other thing you may want to do to really punch the fact that these are hearts is um, come back in and just with texture. Um, I need to go to that. Um, yeah, do a little. Uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, oh yeah, no, that's a good idea. I like it. Where is it? I, can't, I was using the wrong one. There we I go. think it's one of your form brushes. Yeah, it's my form like, bump. There we yeah. go. Turn off lazy mouse. Ooh. And you know you can go in and do that now this being a box you might be able to get away with this Shoot. too much Shoot. nope other direction <laughs> i give such great advice all right <laughs> okay there we go so i need to go back about that far a little bit farther. Ah, look at that. Almost perfect. Ooh, nice. <laughs> and now you don't have to be careful. <laughs> yeah, in terms of what you're talking about in the returns, I think that's something that I wanted to do. I wanted to have a few big flowers. Um, it's not flowers. Hearts kind of on the sides and the corners of the top. Yeah, just make a few of them where they're double return instead of just flat. And that'll make everything else appear as if it is three-dimensional, but Mm -hmm. it's in the space, you know, as opposed to them all being half hearts, you know. Stop being so half-hearted. Yeah, Yeah, I was thinking, and, and the goofy concept behind this is that the hearts are actually being knocked off the top and falling over the sides. Yeah, that's a slight, subtle distinction from the bubbling up. But it's gravity, man. It's just gravity. And now let's see if that helped any. It helps, huh? No, I see what you say because that adds a little bit. Of, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by, you know, working in stuff for three D print, thinking about what's going to punch. Stuff. Yeah, light and dark in terms of of surfaces is really interesting because as a vfx guy i'm used to just doing that in texture right you just paint it on yeah it's really interesting um yeah so i think that that helps them indubitably chat wants to know were the hearts made using an alpha uh they were made using a multi-alpha brush or vector displacement map so kind uh, of kind of <laughs> well i mean it's an alpha sort of well it's a it's a multi-alpha right. according to this universe interface whatever the fuck that means sorry whatever the heck that means right <laughs> we need to get somebody to here to bleep out the uh the cuss words yeah just as long as we keep them to a minimum yeah so um <laughs> yeah i just spent some time just making a bunch of them um, and what's nice about that is since I made, you know, 10 or 15 different versions, then 
I can go in and decide which one works best for the design and just use that. You know? Then you can just hop to them because they come into up here as a, hold on. I don't think I have any VDMs, but they, they come in like insert multi meshes, right? I mean, they still have their own menu, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, if you go into, I should have posted the brushes too. Yeah, if you go into that chisel brush, the third one, or the and, uh, was it chisel 3D? Yeah. There you go. That one right there, yeah. Yeah, so. you get all the different options. You can save your parts. Yeah, so the nice thing is, is that if I wanted to do a whole bunch of these all using the same heart design, it makes it really easy to do that. Yeah. And that's where you could have had them. Um, well, I think you did sort of. I don't It looks like you might have. Where you have some of them that are flatter and some of them that are more yeah. dimensional. Yeah. Uh, the the problem with them is like if you pull it out like on a corner or something like that, it tends to stretch and smear. And as you can see, since I didn't have back face masking on, uh, I had a lot of distortion on the inside of the box as well. So yes, here just to show everyone, <laughs> bad back bad yeah. back face masker. Bad All that in bad. There. stuff in there is yeah. I gotta fix that. I That's think I have a poly group for the interior, so I'm just gonna clean it up yeah no it's easy it's not hard yeah so i would use texture to separate your hearts a little um sure. and in these real flat ones that are patterned very close together mm -hmm. you may want to come back in with slash and yeah. just yeah. give it a wee bit of separation there just so it's a little bit rounder in between those gotcha and I don't want to hear anyone say, oh, well, Tomas, you're not sculpting in layers. Well, this is exactly what you want to happen. You want those edges to separate and lose edge continuity. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you can see just by going in and slapping that with the mm -hmm. slash, you get much more separation in between those. Because these are pretty close together as far as layer goes, you know. And just look at the separation on that side comparatively speaking like up here compared to here yeah yeah oh yeah no it makes a huge difference yeah it gives it gives that heart like the full return and that's the nice thing about slash is you get that nice half round edge mm -hmm. shoot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> but when you start to get back out here, that separation helps. Because see how these look separated and these are starting to blend together? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think, like I said, I think it might help if you make it a little bit more dimensional heart. So you get... So they start to rotate a little bit instead of all being flat. Sure, sure, yeah. All right. I do love your little fossil guy. He's pretty awesome. Well, that's completely an idea I stole from you. So, of course you love it. Because <laughs> I was looking at the rings, how you do a uh, design on the inside. So, yeah, you can see the original texture on there when you turn on polypaint. So, that's just grabbed from an engine image online. And then I just used that to get the, the proportions and then just sculpted really quick. I like him. And, uh, and then added a little heart. I think the, the heart's really a good one. Is to remind everybody that, you know, D scorpions ruled the earth for like millions of years, man. I know. You know, that's that's the thing that always cracks me up is that you know, things like a Tyrannosaurus Rex is closer to us in history than it is a Triceratops. Yeah, it's wild. And you're like, what? No, that can't be true. You know, it's like, yeah, no, these suckers were around for a long time. Yeah. You know, millions of years. Hundreds of millions of years. Hey, man, we're killing it. We've been here like a whole 20,000, and we've made it impossible for ourselves to live on the planet. It's great. We're killing it. Well, and everything else, too. So. Yeah. Well, they'll survive eventually. Something will happen. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have we'll have little sponges living in the Arctic for a while. Yeah, it happens, right? I mean, 
you know, the place used to be all lava. <laughs> We're not going to kill the planet. Our ability to live on it, I have a feeling. You know, there we go. Now, now your heart looks a little bit more fossilized. Yeah, I was. Um, what are you using for that? Is it a just crumple? Uh, good old crumple. Crumple's my favorite thing. I love crumple. Yeah, I, I added some of the those little pegs in there really just quickly, just because I was afraid that the lid would slide around. Yeah, I, I like pegs. Pegs are important things. You're, you're into pegs. The only thing that I'd say about pegs that are dangerous is as you start to get deeper pegs, right? You really need some place to get your fingers underneath it. Because if you have a peg that's even like a quarter inch and it's a super tight fit, you now, so the longer the peg, the looser the fit. Because if you have, you know, a quarter inch peg that's tight, Think about how long it takes to wiggle that sucker off. You know? uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. So um, longer the peg, looser the fit. That yeah, makes sense, yeah. I just love that guy. He's so cool. I did a, um, what were they called? Uh, oh my gosh, now I can't even think of what. So if we take just this part, what were those <laughs> things called? They're like all over the fossils. You know, they're just the little guys. They almost look like little sand dollars, except they're cooler looking. Oh, um, help me here. Diatoms? You know, Are you talking about diatoms? I think so. And there's one called um, the vampire one, or it's Dracula. And it's the one with all the long, like it's this, but it has the long spikes coming off of them. Oh, are you talking about like um, like uh, one of the deep sea octopus type deals? No, no, no. Too? They're horns. They're they just you know it basically looks like that with a little head. You oh, know, it has the trilobites. That's the one. Trilobites. Yeah, there you go. And they have the one that's like a vampire. Is it called a vampire? Is it called Dracul or something like that? But it has all these long horns. Oh um, yeah. And a guy sent me a few scans. He was from Canada. He sent me a few scans of them. And uh, he wanted to turn it into, a, you know, like the old Japanese and some of the Chinese silver and bronze pieces where they're articulated. You know how they articulate. Yeah. And we did one of the, it was really cool. Yeah, I haven't gone down the uh, trilobite uh, wormhole yet, but oh, eventually I'll get into it. Because I, you know, I follow some fossil people online and, Trilobite nerds are hardcore, man. Because oh. there's a lot of different species of them, too. You know, we forget about the diversity of them. Those guys, I think, ruled the Earth even longer than the uh, sea scorpions. Yeah, no. I mean, these things were around forever. Oh, no, that's not a tilobite. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. I mean, I'm like, what the hell is that? That's not what I'm... That one right there. Look at these. Yeah, it's, it's a trilobite. They get three Yeah, loads. look at that. That is so damn cool. And that's real. I mean, someone picked all the sandstone out from that thing. Look at that thing. Oh, yeah. No, you can... Uh, there's a few places I follow that you can buy some cool fossils. I mean, look at that. Who doesn't want one of those in their living room? I do. We definitely have to make some articulated ones of these, dude. Come no, on. No, no doubt. I mean, just look at that guy. What is that even about? And like, what's crazy, some of these, you can actually see the facets on the lens, like, you know, the, um, the faceted eyes and stuff. This looks Yeah, like their it. eyes are, are really weird because they're like, they're omatidia, which are the, the, um, basically the receptors in the eyes. Yeah. They're like these long cones that stick up. They're, they're, they evolve separately from insect eyes. So they have a a different biology to them but they're really wild I mean, um, look at the detail on that thing there's a really cool book called evolution's witness that talks about evolution strictly in terms of vision it's a huge book it's a great like coffee table book and the, the illustrations are amazing it's a really good cool one see on ebay i i i am very reticent to buy buying anything off ebay but yeah yeah no that's nice man look at that aren't those cool crazy. I mean, come on, guys. And that's like old. I mean, not like kind of old, but like really, really old. Look at that. 
They're so cool. I love these things. We, we're definitely making a series of articulated trilobites. That's all there is to it. Put, put a motor in it, man. Make it a robot. Right? That's what I'm saying. Guys, if you can't accept that that's damn cool, I don't know what. I don't know what to tell you. I want to go hunt fossil hunting. Maybe we should build a compound in Montana where, like in the Badlands, where we can just go mine for fossils on our own property. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like a good plan? It sounds like a great plan. We can we can start the um, you know the art compound doomsday prepping and the whole bit. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have to have compounds in different places for different reasons right <laughs> we have to have the let's go dig for dinosaur bones compound and then the <laughs> thailand let's just look at an ocean and be calm and live very affordably t compound <laughs> I, the thailand compounds you know. yeah i mean if you've read any of uh neil shubin stuff he's the guy who um discovered Teak Talik and uh, he has a really great show you can watch online uh, called Your Inner Fish. Awesome. Really fascinating. But, you know, he actually goes fossil hunting in the Arctic and, and all that. Oh. Kind of stuff. But he's interesting because he talked about how he went out with fossil hunters and it was like six or eight months of just every day in the field before he could even see a fossil, whereas everybody else was just spotting them left and right. It's like you have to develop a, an uh, eye. Anyway. yeah it's like gym hunters um you know the where you walk where the the glaciers pass there all these areas where the glaciers stopped you know mm -hmm. like the end of the glacier path during the last ice age and a lot of people walk that for uh gemstones hmm interesting because you get a lot of that just grinding you know and you get all those loose gemstones because i guess there's a place in wisconsin that there's it's crazy you can literally see where the glacier ended right you know it's like gravel weirdness 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 flat plane you know you're like wait a minute <laughs> and, and they said that actually they think that there was one of the tallest mountains on this continent was wisconsin and the ice age ground it down into just like a gravel pit you're like yeah that's awesome <laughs> i love things like that Wisconsin's a grind, man. Oh, man. Yeah, it is. Colder in hell. Yeah, so I think that's what I would do. I think we'll approach this by knocking the legs off. We'll just print them separately. Okay. We'll peg them. So what we'll do, we'll get the feet to be conforming to the ground. Yeah, okay. And then we'll peg them. And then we'll use that peg as the support. We'll peg the legs into the body, right? Mm hmm okay and um and we'll just print these separately and then that also makes for an easier throw if we do it in metal you know um it's easier to throw um through thinner like like this is going to be tough to throw because it goes fat thin fat thin and see like how thin this is coming mm -hmm. out to this it'd probably be easier to turn this into one piece cast it separately and throw it on that way you know that you get a good throw because the problem when you're casting this kind of stuff is the cavocation um as the metal's coming through i don't know why this doesn't it resets itself every time and that's a little frustrating all right so we can turn that off turn that off let's turn this on and so when you, the metal's coming in you know you need the volume to hit and then it compresses and it's forcing through and in these little areas you get porosity because you get this you know it, mm. it gets turbulent as it comes it fills gets then turbulent fills turbulent fills right you got to think of how it's filling up right yeah. and then when it comes to something small and it's big and then it's thin this is this is the nightmare of casting right now with yeah. the good vacuum over pressure machines it's not that dramatic but to retain a good cast, I would probably break it here and or definitely put this piece on separately just so um, 
you know, you get a, it. It's easier to assemble than ruin the whole piece. Gotcha. You know what I mean? So basically, I would break off the stinger there and then add a peg to it. Yep. So that be some okay, kind of like the legs. Yep. For the uh, for the tail, w would that be like one piece in the stinger, or would I have a different piece for each segment of the tail? No, no, no. That would totally fill because this isn't tiny. It would fill fine. I'm just saying that this is. You might have some problems back in here, mm -hmm. um, only because. You know, if you're starting your main sprues here and here, and you might sprue to here, and you might, so you can get away with it if you're spruing to these, and then, as your tree comes up, you know, it's it's filling them this way, not this way. Does that make sense? So when you throw, uh, yeah. okay, it's yeah. hitting all of them at the same time. Okay. So that's something to talk to Tony about whether we want to break it there there but for printing i think that um i can probably print this in one piece and that won't be a problem i just want to put, print the legs separately yep. just so it's cleaner you know because otherwise you have to support all this and it just turns into you know crap us so for the uh for the body i so i don't want to necessarily attach the the main body of the scorpion to the lid right i want to keep that separate as well well, what I would probably do is attach it through the head. Hold on, where? No. Come on, stop. Escape. I don't want you to auto save. Fine, it's going to auto save. We're auto saving. Um, what I would probably. Whoa. There we go. What I would probably do is do a. Uh, now, see, this is where our 16 memory oh, comes and haunts us. It's like, yeah. um, what I would probably do is do a pretty big post right here under sure. the pro or under the mandible thingies. Mm -hmm. You know, where you're hiding a um, a post in here, because that way, you know, even if all this is attached really well, you know, these are still pretty thin intersections, and if it gets bumped yeah you've now bent all your legs and let's face it it's a box it's going to get bumped so i would probably move um i would probably move these up a touch and then you know at the end of the day and move it down just a little so it okay. hides the post and then jam a post in here and you know obviously not mm -hmm. just drag it out like that, but you know, you know, we could probably. I, I'm a liar. I'm a liar. I'd keep that up off the ground, and then jam a post, kind of right there. You see that uh, little wing thing that's coming out from underneath the legs in the back? Uh huh. Uh, rotate it around. This. You see that little wing thing? Uh -huh. That structure. The little it's cicada called, guy. That's called a pectine. Nobody is quite sure what it does. They have think it might be a sensory organ that picks up vibrations and stuff. They're very cool. You got these yeah. little weird little fingery things on it. What I, I, what I think it is, is when, let's hide the box. Scorpions play dead. And this looks like a little cicada. So the bigger cicada comes <laughs> down to talk to the little cicada. And then he goes <laughs> and traps him, just like a Venus flytrap. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. There you go. Because that's definitely a baby cicada. It's like, Mom, I'm over here. Yeah, and I'm sure my, my details on that are pretty stylized. but No, I, I'm pretty sure that's it. It's, and then your mom's like, hey, you're 15 years old. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> you know, bug humor. I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, with, with me, I'm always afraid that if if I have something that's not right for the species and the sex of the insect, some nerd's going to come along and tell me that. You know, oh, like, and they will. That's why it's important to have a good first model. And then, like, then you're like, no, no, the baby cicada's there. You can get off my back, buddy. I've had it with 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 fire ants. Uh, my first fire ant model. I had somebody emailing me and pointing out where I had the wrong hairs in the wrong place and the wrong teeth and the mandibles and stuff. You're like, are you? Get, get off my back, yeah. Look, I got look. I got two hugging scorpions here. You're really gonna give me grief about my little cicada petal? 
<laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I would I would pin them under here. Okay. And like, you know, feasibly you can kind of drag this down a little bit more and then pull the pig out of there. And then that way from you're creating a different sight line, right? Because by pulling that down you can hide a peg a little behind it. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. And also, you figure your side yeah, line's kind of like there, right? I could also hide some, you know, the pile of hearts that they're standing on. I could exactly. always pump those up a little bit more, too. Yep. Yeah, no. I look forward to it. This is going to be fun. No, I think, I mean, I think it's pretty close. I mean, you were a little sloppy with your back face masking. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'll take that. Did I mention that? Everybody, here, look. This is I know not I have a decimated how you version. mask. I have a decimated version, which I think I fixed it on. So I'm okay. going to go with that as my excuse. My dog right. ate it. My, do dog. my dog ate it. I'm pretty sure that's it. Oh, and this I is good. Actually, your pegs are pretty loose. That's actually good. In the uh, in an ideal world, I'd love to see this in like silver or something like that. You know, I completely agree. And I think that would be cool. Um, I have an idea for about 50 more of these with different bugs and stuff. So. I like it. I'm telling you, we we are making bug t-shirts and trilobite jewelry. We're going to start making it. <laughs> this is the first thing I've done in a while that I've been really super happy with. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Because um, like this Except for that bad face mask. Bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the bracelet was okay, but it didn't, you know, it's like I need a hook. So there has to be something in it to like grab your attention and hold it. Well, and this I, just has a little bit more character than the bracelet did, you know? Yeah, a little heart gag kind of helps out a lot, you know, because it gives, it's like a pop song. You know, every good pop song has a hook that keeps you, keeps it stuck in your brain. I kissed a scorp and I liked it. <laughs> Wasn't that, is that right? <laughs> the one thing I would say, actually now looking at it from this direction, sure. I would, and I'm going to completely cheese this out. I'm not going to do this very well. But I would definitely come in here and I think that you're still just a squeak. And I understand that it could be anatomically true, but I think that you could get just a little bit more. Um, you know, I'm going to just delete lower real quick. And we are going to twist. Come on. You maybe break the symmetry up a little bit more? Yeah, exactly. Just. Yeah, yeah I think the legs could probably be. Have you know, more. just kick it. So when you're looking at it from the top. Oh, yeah. See how there's more. See how this is very. Mm, 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 yep. No, mm. I agree. And here we have just a little bit more, you know, get some contrapposto in there where this is a nice S curve from the top, you know, and then, sure, sure. you know, these are a little bit more contrapposto as well. Or, you know, it. I know a scorpion's body might not do that, but I think that um, just getting a little bit more motion into it, because yeah. from here it looks good, you know what I mean? And I didn't notice it until I just looked at it from this angle. But I yeah, think, I think my my initial ideas I really want to make that heart shape with the tails. Not I, I think my main concern was with the claws. I didn't want to break the look of that heart, but I'm feeling pretty good about it now. So I'm I'm happy to go in there and maybe. Well, I mean, and it's just it's really even just something like this. Oh yeah. Right, and so now. You're getting a little bit of motion in there. And like I said, a scorpion might not even be able to do that, right? But as an object goes, it gives you better negative space. It gives you better, you know, kind of sight lines. Yeah. And it gives you like a visual motion. It allows your eye to travel and kind of follow something that's happening, right? And that... Boop. 
boop, boop. Right. It's just a little bit more visually interesting with a little bit of squirrely yep. doodle in there. Squirrel. Squirrels. Squirrely do. Squirrel. Squirrel. <laughs> Squirrel. That's awesome. No, looks great. And so uh, we can work on breaking this up, chopping it up. And I want to print in that new tough anyway. Okay. So um, we can print a little version of this in the tough. Is this the scale you want it? How big is this? Do we I think it? I made it, well, I, I believe it should be at the right scale. Yeah, so I think. 23 mil? So no. this is only like a 50 mil box? Originally, I made it like, I don't know, something happened because originally it was supposed to be like 50 to 60 millimeters. So somehow it got scaled down. Yeah, it's about half that size. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened, but we could fix that. Yeah. Yeah, it's not supposed to be a huge box, but you know. Yeah, it's just a little stash box. Yeah. That's no, cute. I like it. I like it. Um, so let's let's actually work on um, getting it chopped up in, in space, and then we'll print it this week. All right, man. Because like I said, I want to try that tough, their new tough, and this would be a good thing for the tough. Jaja. Sounds good, man. Awesome sauce. All right. Thanks very much. It was very, very helpful. Oh. I hope I didn't talk over your uh, berating me too much. Um... Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Um, real quick, somebody's asking why hearts and scorpions. If you look at the segments of it, it, it evolved slowly. Can you post? Is the, the post, is the link posted in here somewhere? I had a really goofy idea for doing an animation of these guys dancing. But if you look at the segments of the of the scorpions, they have a very heart-like quality to them. Is it on your... It's on Instagram, right? Um, if you go to YouTube... Oh, it's on YouTube. Yeah, yeah it is on Instagram. Yeah. All right. Uh, and What's the up, YouTube uh, channel, Eric? Uh, look up Entomology Animated. Just to make your life difficult. I know. I misspelled everything. This is, see, this is how you plug, man. There you go. That one at the top. There you go. Of course, the compression is killing everything. But, you know. What? No, that's beautiful. <laughs> and people wonder why I, I'm absolutely okay with the weird, blotchy, like preloaded textures in, uh, in uh, <laughs> what's what's the game cyberpunk it drives everyone nuts and I'm just like oh no that's fine it's because my internet at home is so bad that's all I ever get so um, yeah there you go oh my gosh cool boop all right so who's next next uh, thank you very much man yeah of course uh, my friend Sam Sam T oh wait, we, we have a question um, real quick and this is a thing I've never heard of. Uh, what is the difference between Z remesher and transpose Z remesher? Are those two different things? Transpose Z remesher? Yeah. Is it in here? Eric? <laughs> he bailed on you. Oh, that bastard. He's the one who knows that stuff. Um transpose z remesh is it i think that's something that paul covered last week and or the week before last in one of his uh his cast that bastard see what he does to me he comes up with really cool features that i know nothing about uh z remesher i don't see it I'm seeing Z remesher with transpose tool versus little menu under geo. Not transpose tool. You're talking about the gizmo? Gizmo. Is this what you're talking about here? Yeah, those are the same. Well, what? It, okay, so it's it's the same function but it gives you different options it just gives you this little slider 
So you give it the rough geometry and you don't have to prep anything. It's just this really fast thing. The main thing is, is that it won't do it in symmetry and it won't do it with anything that has subdivisions, right? So um, I assume this is what you're talking about. It's remeshing out of gizmo, not transpose. Yes. Um, so it will react to what your settings are here in your Z remesh. It's just like a quick action Z remesher. Does that make sense? Just like Z remesh or remesh by Dynamesh here is just Dynameshing. It's just a fast way to get there and it gives you a slider between zero and a million. So you can pick a, a, a final poly count. And so that's all it is. It's just a, a fast way without going in and futzing around. You can just do everything from within the gizmo. So it's just sort of a shortcut to those tools. I use those a lot actually. But since I have Z remesher out here, um, I have the whole thing because depending on how I'm Z remeshing, um, <clears throat> I want, like, I may want to retain my poly groups. I may want to retain my creasing. And you can't do that from with, well, if it's set here, if I'm not mistaken, the, um, it will react to whatever you have your settings at. So let's say you have it adaptive and your target poly count is 5,000. I think it'll remain adaptive, but you choose, well here, right, you know what? We have this lovely thing we can just test as Eric's thingy here gets Z remeshed. <laughs> okay, so we have this, and if we come in here, we have to do much lower resolution just so um, this won't be hard. We're gonna delete higher, delete lower, come in here, Remesh by Z Remesher, and you can see all it is is um, you are. Oh, one sec, I have to fix that. So you're selecting a size here. Hold on, I'm gonna leave that right there real quick. I'm gonna hop out of the screen. My Wi Fi just fell over. have to get things that are not black cables everything's black cable that can never find anything um all right so as you can see our target poly count was 71,000 we came out with 79,000 it was adaptive um now this is interesting. Oh, it'll allow you to do symmetry here. Interesting. So let's do this. Is it actually gonna let us do symmetry? Yeah, I tend to use this little menu for Z resymmetry, because I tend to do things when I'm Z remeshing. But um, no, I wanted to see if it kept that. And Sina, who originally asked the question, says that the Gizmo Z remesher typically works very well, but the normal um, geography Z remesher tends to spoil models for them. And they're just trying to figure out why. What what do you mean by well? I mean, yeah, it's much. the exact same tool. It's just dependent. Yeah, see that allowed us to do symmetry from there. That's cool. I forgot about that. And that might be part of the problem. Um, so it depends on how you're just. You have a lot more control over this. It's the exact same Z remeshing tool. These are just shortcuts. So, um, if you blow up, you might have too many of these things selected. Often. Like I have problems when I'm like, oh, I want to keep my groups and I want to freeze my group. The second you freeze groups or freeze borders, 
it does weird crap. So um, keeping groups works. Keeping creases works well. Detect edges works well. I find that unless I, I wind up, and once again, I'm doing pretty organic stuff. I mean, on square, like hard surface modeling, it might work better, right? Um, but I tend to go from pretty high geometry, right, to pretty low geometry. So the freezing borders and freezing groups um, tend to cause me more grief. So I don't use them a lot. But keep group, detect edges, and keep creases, I do use quite a bit. And adaptive, and turning adaptive on and off, that has a lot to do with how it comes out. Can you tell me what what your um, um, what what's it blowing up, or why is it failing? What's the issue? Because it's the same. It's like the same machine, right? So it just has to do with this. Just simplifies everything. You're like, okay, well, I want this to be, you know, seven hundred polys, and you put it in, and you know, boop, there you go. It's going to do what it's going to do to get you down to that seven hundred and sixty-four polys. The other thing, hold on, I can't see. Um, Sinus, so um, when you talk about what it's doing with models, I'd need to know what you mean a little bit more. But here's the other thing. Uh, let's see. Do I have something? Right. You know, that's just taking us down. Um, let me come here and I'll show you what I mean by here. W... Boop, come on, cube, frame. Let me see my frame. All right. I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. All right, let's do it this way. Mm -hmm. some holes in this. Nope. Okay, that's fine. And let's blow a hole in here. And let's blow a hole in here. And let's blow a hole in here. All right. And let's divide this up. And let's just move it around a little. Mm. Bizarro. Okay. And I'm just going to move this around a little so we have slightly more obscure shapes. Because I don't want it to be square. I want it to have to think about the remodel or the remesh. Okay, there we go. So this has some things that make it difficult to remesh low, right? We have a lot of, because a square, a flat face can have one polygon. The second you start getting into more organic shapes, you have much rougher um, um, right, hold on. Okay, let's so as I want to Z refresh this. So a lot of people just take this down to its initial like 
polycat. So let's go W, let's take it to something low, remesh by Z remesh, delete multiple lower res, lower res, delete higher, delete lower. And I'm gonna come in here, remesh by Z remesher, and we're gonna take this all the way down to like 400, and it is going to make an ugly remesh. Because 400 really isn't enough to keep the, oh well, actually, I'm a complete absolute liar. I did okay. <laughs> Let's take it lower. <clears throat> I love it when, you're like, this will never work. <laughs> there we go. And you can see how we start to get weird compressions and it gets a little odd. Well, that's why I tend to use Z remesher out here, not in here, because let's take this back to there and turn this off, come in here. I'm going to say, I'm just going to start at 5,000, turn off adaptive, because I actually want it to be around 5,000. Um, we could do keep groups, but it's not going to do me any good here and we don't have any creases or edges. So I'm going to leave all that off, save, and Z remesh. And this should Z remesh in that 5,000 range. Okay, and so when we straight remesh down to lower, um, lower geometry, sometimes holes that are smaller will start to close and you'll lose the shapes of your holes where if you do it this way, I started at 5,000, I'm just gonna go half and Z remesh, and Z remesh, and Z remesh. And you can see as we work down, right, I mean, that's down to what, 350, that's 600. And you can see how there's less distortion in this one than the one that went to 700, right? Because it's trying to recalculate all that from, you know, 100,000 to 300, and it starts skimping on some geometry, where if you come out here and you do it at like 5,000, where it's going to have more than enough, and you can see that it tries to retain the geometry that's there every time it halves, and it gives you a better um, Z remesh. Your geometry is just a little cleaner, so when you go back and divide it, you have a slightly better mesh, I find, if you do it Z remeshing and then having it back. Um, I don't know. So the only thing I can think that why you're doing it okay with the other one and this one isn't is that you might have um, something set. So like, let's freeze borders and freeze, let's freeze groups, right? And now turn that off. We'll go to 5Z remesh. And see how it blew up and became weird? Because it was trying to freeze groups. And it, it does weird stuff, right, on something like this. So if you go freeze borders, Z remesh. See, it's an error encountered. So depending, if you're out here, depending on what you have set, can really determine some of the grief, right? We're gonna keep groups in Z remesh, and you can see that it's going to try to retain those two, the separation between the groups. So this line right here is the one that it's really gonna try to retain, right? It's gonna try to retain this line. So as we go back in and Z remesh, because we have that selected, that line becomes important to it. And then half Z remesh, Z remesh. And you can see how it's doing everything in its power to keep that line the same because it's looking at the group separation. See how that's a sharp crisp edge? Because we've told it to pay attention to that group. And now we're at 631 and you can see how this is remeshed differently because we told it to look at the groups. Does that make sense? Yep, I think you nailed it. Okay. All right. So Who's next? Sammy T, who I believe is in chat with you. Sammy. How are how everybody doing? Very good, very good. And how are you doing? 
fine, thank you. Wonderful. All right. Actually, I'm really fond of the hair. It reads well. It has thank good separation. I think that, yeah, no, it's goodly. Your lips are just a little funky with your lips and your eyes are a little flat, yeah. Because see here from the side, you can see the whole eyeball almost. So we really want this perspective turned on. All right, center, scoop. I would say when you get out here and along these outside edges, um, this is where the twist brush comes in really handy because it allows you to get some separation off of these edges. See how all of a sudden that's sitting off of the surface? Um, okay. Just so your edges don't get soft. Right, because if you think about it, out here is actually one of the sharpest places in the hair, right? Because it's actually separating. If I go the right way. <laughs> yeah, so don't be afraid to finish those edges out. And then you can just bring clay fill back in and fill up that little crack. Hold down all, get rid of it, and smooth it out. And you lose that little ridge that the twist puts in. But it allows you to get a little bit more separation on those outside edges. Um, so let us hide this. Where are those? Oh, those are the garlands. OK, we're going to hide that for now. And let us just look at the face. I'm going to come in here, and let's just keep the face for a second. Everybody, calm down. There we go. So the thing to remember about eyes is that um, this goes farther back, right? And you can see the eyeball. So your profile always sort of looks a little bit more like this. Even on people who have very, very, very flat faces, when you look at it from dead side, you get that, you know, when you draw, you learn to draw an eye. You kind of get that, and then it's... That's the same angle as the eyeball, right? All right. And then that's the bag, and then that's the brow. And so, you know, this meat is actually very thin, and it's following the same um, shape as the eyeball. And this is where and why people use balls as reference material for eyes. Um, is this ball part of your sculpture? Here, I'll just duplicate it. Yeah, no, no, no. It's just for uh, measuring the stuff. Okay. okay. Uh, here. We'll move it. W. Drag it over here. I want this guy hide that. Where's my ball? The, oh, there it is. I'm like, what'd I do with it? Everybody calm down. There we go. We want this on. All right. What is up with you? W, hello. <laughs> Alright, so our eyeball is about as big as our socket. So we're only getting that front part of the eyeball. Let's kind of bring it dead center there. Bring it up a touch and bring it out. So the face, right, you're getting your brow lines from your bone. And this socket is all just floppy meat around the eyeball, right? And right. so you get your eyeball where you need it. And I'm just going to turn on transparency. I am going to go project. And please forgive me, because I'm just going to do this quickly. <laughs> you're like, that doesn't look like an eyeball. I'm like, come on, give me a break here, man. Okay, so, <laughs> um, boom, and we're just going to take that in just a touch and smooth it out. Okay. So you have your eyeball. Now you can see that already, look at how much meat we've displaced just by 
getting that in there, right? And this ball may be a touch small, but I think it'll help you a little bit here. And so now when we're thinking about, actually, yeah, let's just do this from the side. I'll take this one step farther. Suck it. Hello? Oh. Because. Okay. I'm like, why is that not transitioning? So we have a eye socket. Smooth stronger, please. Mm hmm. here and we're going to think about this as the eye socket so that this right here is the crest of that bone right so this is a socket why am I just getting a no smoothing power here <laughs> okay Turn on our eyeball. Boop. Yep, that's what I thought. Our eyeball was a little small. Okay. And now we're going to. Where's the peak? Peak's a little low. All right. And so now I'm going to use project. And we're just going to drag this up here really quick. Boop. Okay, let's hide our ball. There's our ball. So what's happening within our socket and our meat, right? What's happening is you're getting some meat overlap here. And that is the top lid. And it's going to come in, I did stretch that out, and it's going to do that, right? And then this is going to do that. That comes in. No smoothing. <laughs> Might have made that a little big. And then that is this meat. Coming in. I made that a little prominent. We're going to knock that back just a touch. So, mm -hmm. Your little doogie thing. Mm -hmm. right, but you see how you're getting that profile of your eyeball, right? That All right. So make sure to look at it from multi multiple angles. I know that I mangled this, but I think the idea is getting across. <laughs> Sorry. I made my ball no, really. too big. <laughs> right, because this is behind this, right? This is the proudest area right here. So you need to make sure that when you're looking at it from the side, 
you're actually getting a cross cut here. And I know that I'm angled this. Like I said, sorry. <laughs> Bad <laughs> base makes a lousy eye. I totally <laughs> porked it. The eye, I made it too big. But my point still stands that this right here should be the proudest part of the eyeball, right? And then this should cut back this direction. This should cut back this direction. And that gives you this stuff in here. And also, not being able to smooth this out is annoying. Subdivisions. Keep your subdivisions. <laughs> Got it. Um, where here you can see that I can see that little guy right there. You see what I mean? And these are cutting in. So your eyeball is sort of doing this, where it should be filling the space. This is coming around that surface and creating that lid, right? And then that's coming from there, giving you that, that's that, and then the cheek is out. So your eyeball is still continuing around and in. And these really follow the same angle as the ball because it's just meat sitting on top of the ball right it's a thin membrane it's not really a lot and then this is just that meat lumpling up so you know the more the more face fat and skin you have there you wind up with like those fatty features right so your brows there right. and then it comes in and now your eyelid has that and now look at that all right <laughs> so It just doesn't let me escape out of all these auto saves, is it? Come on, you. Whoa. Wow. It just completely ate that. I killed Zebra. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, oh, no, no, it's uh, me. No. No <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's my poor little computer. Don't worry about it. It's coming. Uh, I put a deposit on Starlink two nights ago, so hopefully it won't take six months and we get Starlink, so I can do this from home with my new computer. Yay. Nice. All right, let's see if that crashed and gave us a recovery file. It sure did. Look at that. Mm -mm. Maybe. Come on, you. <clears throat> See, this is where I always screw it in critiques, is I try to be quick. And then I'm, when I'm trying to be quick, I completely mangle it, and then I don't show you anything of value. <laughs> no, no, I get, uh, I get the idea. No, 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 no. no. It just uh, the model didn't have uh, like leveling in the detail or uh, the subdivision because it is was old model. Uh, the detail I worked on it again to increase it sure. and make it better. This is why there is no level on the model. It's okay. It just makes it hard to smooth things. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, and so, yeah, I made this ridiculously huge. It looks like someone popped him in the eye with a bat. <laughs> <laughs> the eyeball should be in here. I'm like, uh, it's really sad. I apologize. <laughs> No, oh, look at that. That's horrible. Oh my God, it's so bad. I can't even look at it. Here, we're going to work on... Wait, wait. Here. Shh. I don't know what happened to that side. It just disappeared. So basically... <laughs> you know, if you just punch this back some. Bring this up some. 
sort of get it in the place you want it. And then you can come back in, shape it, get it kind of where it needs to be, right? Because that's going to cut back. And then this is your cheekbone. And you can see just by pushing that, we kind of created a better silhouette. The lip off is all right, yeah. that cheek out a lot more than you had it sorry okay so that gives you a slightly better um, profile right that seems a little bit more like a ball sitting in a socket than um, two big puffy lips surrounding a really tiny ball yeah um, and I, I tend to try to keep this pretty planular at the beginning. And then that way I can determine what's actually going under what and where. Because often you get this transition here where this rolls over the eyelid. Right, so meat here and this is coming over the eyelid. And that meat's coming up here. So you're getting a little bit of transitional area here. And I mean, that's not always how it happens but I'm just saying this by keeping it flatter if you're thinking about these in flatter planes when you're starting to do your sculpt up it allows you to find those little step layers that are actually happening there right and then that these transitions are what sell it, right? One thing's going right. under something, the other's going over, and that's what make these interesting as opposed to um, having it just be half rounds. You know. See, that eye is so much better than <laughs> that eye. I don't know what you did over here. You know, you, you kind of lost me over here. I don't know. I don't know what you did, but I think... <laughs> it became Odin. And this was... Yeah, exactly. It's, it's an eye patch. That's what it was. Yeah, I was heading for yeah. that eye patch. Very good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I knew I meant to do that for some reason. Yeah. That's much better. Um. And then the only problem here is the outside of the bottom of your lip is in front of the top of your lip. And that's not really what anatomy yeah. does. This yeah. um, needs to just kick back here some. This needs to kick back. I'm destroying your hair, your lovely beard there. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, Yeah, just remember here. We're just going to even go back a little bit more. And we're going to get rid of this because let's actually look at the face, right? Because if you think about it, what you had is this was in front of that, right? So this is where I, did you do the face before you put the hair on or did you do because it sort of looks like you did the hair and then kind of put lips in it no that was their face uh then the hair oh really all right yeah well, you need to really work on your lower lip anatomy here <laughs> <laughs> um, okay so you know this is me coming out and over and you may not i'm, I'm not saying you necessarily have to put this in here you know you can keep this much yeah. more simplified but i want you to kind of think about what's happening right 
you have meat that comes here. This lip sort of does this. Here, I'm going to even get rid of a lot of our lower lip here. Is this in the center of the world? Can we actually use symmetry? Okay, I'm going to use symmetry just because that's easier. So you got to think your upper lip is here. And let's look at the profile, right? It kind of comes up. Back. And then it actually gets thin over here. And this in here is this diving back and under this, all right? All right. And so, and that's still pretty far out. And so we're just going to give them a lip. That comes down. This sort of goes into that. And then your lower lip can be more out right here. It's sort of almost like two, it's almost like a peanut. And then this merges in, but it, this is, you may find some anatomical reference where that's this lower lip is in front of that out here, but it's not normal. <laughs> um, so just think of that lip sort of as a peanut, right? And I'm making this big and overly exaggerated. And then it kind of has a ridge right here and then this all cuts back from there. And then this kind of goes under. And that's creating, you know, you see it when people smile, this like little happy dent guy thing going on here and that's this lip diving under that and then this bottom lip just kind of follows it in but it's kind of disappearing because you also have like this little muscle thing happening right here so these are two little humps that kind of happen here and that gives you your your division in your chin and that's your peak of your chin. Mm -mm. This all kind of cuts back and under this. So you have your little madugi thing there. That comes out and sort of does that. You have your lip. And it kind of comes in and disappears into here. That comes in and sort of disappears into there. And I know I gave him a little puckery puckery pooch mouth there but um, because now see from the side we have a our profile Funny. is nose lips chin you know there's like a line that goes like that yeah and so that's in that line. Your chin comes out there. That's your jaw. Right. And so now, <laughs> are you ready for this? This is going to be good. Let's come back here. <clears throat> We're going to see if this works. You have to go back far enough. Oh, man. You can do it. You can do it. My poor machine. I keep forgetting this isn't my machine at home. This poor little bugger only has like 16 gigs of RAM and it, it it's working. It's trying. It's doing its best here. Come on. 
Didn't go here. Let's just go all the way back. All the way back. That's an awesome eye patch. I just want you to know of this whole thing. You really killed it on that eye patch. I'm yeah. so <laughs> blaming you for the eye patch. It was totally you. It's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I don't know why you insisted on putting an eye patch there, but it's okay. I'll let you get away with it this time. Two Birdo is the honest one. <laughs> Zeus and Odin. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you slow pokey bugger. Come on. I don't want to tap on it because then I'll just crash. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Luckily, it's still early. Yeah. No, no, no. Cancel. We don't want to undo that. All right. But now what we're going to do is we're going to hold down control and hit that. Come on. You can do it. Control, hit that. Why don't you... Oh, there it goes. All right. Now... We're gonna come all the way back out here. You can do this. So if anyone ever asks me why I get a, an expensive computer and people are like, oh, you buy way too much computer than you need, Tomas, to run ZBrush. You're right, this machine runs ZBrush perfectly well. But do you see how long it's taking me to do this little bit right here? Yeah. You do this 15 times a day? And that's why people don't use some of these tools is because they're they're CPU and RAM intensive and you can sit here and wait 15 20 minutes to do this and if you can do this in like 30 seconds and not 30 minutes these become much more powerful tools. <laughs> no one understand uh, until the phone is a problem inside. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> I was having this problem with my PC in the work. Uh, I work with aluminum mold. Mm -hmm. So uh, to convert STL file to IGS, uh, my PC in uh, the work didn't handle it. Because yeah. it's uh, high detailed and stuff like that. So I take my model with me to home, mm -hmm. work on it, convert it, and take it back to the work in XD. <laughs> so are you, um, are they CNCing uh, aluminum molds? Is that what you're doing? Uh, I work as a giveaway production uh, to like uh, flash USB, uh, rubber, uh, placement, uh, as cup, uh, like a cup coaster, stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing yeah. uh, the material called BVC. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, like injection, but not injection, use like uh, a furnace and both material in the mold and the uh, uh, put it in the furnace and the compress it like that. Uh, so you need to make the model in 3D model and convert it to IGS to can make the model in in mold in aluminum mold. Right. Awesome. Thanks. And let's get our focal shot here. See. So now look at this. We can bring our our awesome mustache back. <laughs> There we go. Look. <laughs> but you can see that, you know, now those lips are actually once again coming back and in. And yeah. that that eye patch is awesome. So just think about the actual structure of the face and um, how that mouth ends. Once again, um, I don't know if. I mean, if it, this might sound overly redundant, but anatomy for sculptors, they just do such a great job of this. And that is these really base breakdown models. You can see how these planes are working out and you're getting these nice planular surfaces showing how this is going back and in, right? It's cutting back and in. Come on. 
right. that page. Right. So you got to just remember that that is actually. See how that's cutting back under that. And that's why I like these these as anatomy references because it really shows you how the planes of meat are sitting down. And the other thing they did that's really nice is that there is anatomical breakdown and you can learn all the muscles and the structure, but that isn't really what is happening on the surface of the face. And they really are very good about breaking down the facets of the surface of the face. Because once again, here, you see what I was saying? Like the straight line, right? And your lips are on that. And your lip was way out here. And I'm not saying that that doesn't ever happen, but it's not what you were going for, I don't think. So um, if you look up the stuff, uh, Anatomy for Sculptors has some really great um, breakdown. I mean, here's another. You can see, like in the eye, right? You can see that this is coming in. And if we have the profile, let's go back to this guy. Come on. Now it's going to take me there. But see, they have an entire thing on anatomy of facial structure yeah, yeah, expressions. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fantastic book. But it shows you how the meat is actually working, right? And, and I think that would help you some because I think that getting the eye where it was sort of in the right position, and you can see we're getting the nose to chin, right? And now we brought the lips out right. And here, I'm just gonna reload your tool. No, I duplicated that, didn't I? I think I did. Didn't I? Come on. Yeah. And here you can see, see where your lip is? Here, I'm gonna turn transparency. See how your lip is way yeah. up here? So I think that's just a little more attention there to what's actually happening. And you're going to be, because all of this is great. I mean, you obviously spent a lot of time and energy getting the hair right and the face right. Yeah. And then you just kind of do these like little fat lip things here. Boop, boop, you know? <laughs> and then, um, I don't know. Yeah, I gave him what the detail is on here uh, because uh, I think uh, this was a reference from the ring made in marble. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, uh, so I didn't get a little uh, more detail on the lips. Sure. All, all, all my focus was, I think, on the hair. Yeah. Yeah. With the, oh well, I mean, you did a fan, a fabulous job on the hair. I mean, the hair looks fantastic. Thank you very much. So I just think that. Um, and the other thing is, especially if you're using historical reference, you know, a lot of time anatomy isn't important in any way, shape or form in primitive sculpture, you know. Um, so if you're going for a reference tied to a historical piece, it could have looked exactly like that. You know what I mean? When I'm when I'm giving you feedback, it's much more about, you know, just. How do you make the anatomy bear? How you, you know, so I might be bringing up issues that weren't even your issues because you were like, well, that's exactly what the ring looked like. I'm like, oh, well, sorry. <laughs> um, how, this is how uh, you learn. You must take into consideration some information. Can make your work better. Uh, oh, without a question. You, you can use it in another job on another model you can work on. It. Yeah. found a cheat there that's a little bit more round so you know i think that by getting some of the facial anatomy where it needs to be uh, right you can see that your lip here is just way too um too wide, way too yes. far out yeah. yeah and then your eyeballs you know are just they're sitting like slants on the head as opposed to being balls in the in the head yeah mm -hmm. and this fabulous eye patch you just really missed this eye patch opportunity which i think you really needed to take advantage of and if you were going with eric you could have made this like a a heart eye patch yeah and i think that would have made this a thousand times better 
There you go. <laughs> that that helped a lot. I know it. And yeah. I can hear it in your hear it in your voice that that is what completed you. Right? Oh, then love. <laughs> Boop. There we go. <laughs> and you know, obviously, you can. Because this gets pretty back, this little groover in here, that's a pretty deep spot on the face. But the hair is fabulous. It looks great. Thank you very much. Henry when uh, was uh, leaving a message because he needed to go because he have an, an emergency. Who did? So uh, yeah, he typed in the chat to Henry. Uh, yeah. Oh, I hope he's okay. All right, who's spamming me? You jerk. Chicky jump jumping. You're a lunatic, dude. Uh, oh, well, I hope it's nothing too bad. Hmm. <laughs> it, it does kind of look now like Kurt Russell. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> See? And then the only other thing I would suggest is be careful about putting fine detail on the bottom because it will be flattened out, right? I mean, there's just no way around it. Um, so I tend to at least give myself a ridge. And I kind of call this a striking plate because that way your ring has a place that it can be hit and flattened and hammered. And then you can put this stuff behind it, right? And that's going to be a much safer detail. So it's just really, it's, it's sketchy to put fine detail in the bottom of a ring because we use marble and steel countertops so much now like you go out to a bar or go out or something and you just do this once and now all of that's gone. So yeah. um, I find it safer to have a nice big flat detail here on the bottom. And the other thing that having something that's a pretty flat and, it, you know, I put, you know, little shapes in them and stuff. But the other nice thing about this is, and this is something that I have to admit I've been fighting for decades because I'm like, I don't want to do it, but it's kind of smart to do. And what that is, is if you have an area right here in the center where the design sort of ends, um, you can cut this right here. You can, let's try that again. You can cut this right here and size the ring. You know, they can put a spacer in there. So giving, yeah. giving a ring someplace to be sized is helpful because sadly, People's fingers do change shapes, and if they have a piece they like, I got yelled at a few times by people who purchased my rings. They're like, "You didn't put any place to have this size." I was like, "Lose weight." You know, that's not really a. That's, <laughs> that's just yeah. so you know, not the answer. By the way, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that was bad call on my part, actually. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah, especially when it was like you know a week before the wedding, no one really wanted to hear that. Uh, oops. So think about that. But the hair looks great. Just pay a little bit more attention to the actual you know proportions of the face, and um, I think that it looked great. 
Thank you very much. No, you're killing it. It looks good. Thank you. I very appreciate nice. it. Very nice. Thank you for sharing. Thank you very much. Kurt Russell. Now I can't look at it and it's not Kurt Russell. That's funny. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Jim. Uh, what's this here? Uh-oh. I'm back. Oh. Magic 8 Ball says, ask again later. Did your printer blow up? <laughs> okay. Uh-oh. I heard him starting to talk. Um, who's next? Uh, Vangelo? Is that... Uh... File name. Oh, here's Vangelo. Yep. All right. Oh, well, look. What steps can I take to make this model more printable? There look at that. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> right? I mean, that made that easy. Well, the first thing is you have 11,000 different parts. So you're going to have to combine all this into one shell. Um, so hold on. Let's take your text. That's really funny. That worked rather well. I appreciate that. All right, so now let's turn transparency off. And let's turn paint off because we don't want to look at that. Okay, so a handful of things to make this more printable quickly is when it comes to things like this, right? You have this stuff, try to get it let's go here come on come on you can do it there we go we're going to turn transparency on again Boop. and i'm going to turn everything off except for the body and no everything oh let's start that's why <laughs> bastard yeah. okay we got that on and we got that. So first thing you want to do is come back in here. And you may like exactly where this top part of this is, right? Um, come back in and just uh, bring this and get this to penetrate to the surface, right? That's going to make this much easier to print. Now, this is a hollow mesh. So you're going to have issues with printing this in the sense of it is going to try to support this probably. And you might have to come in here and dig some of that out. But the key is, is just get it to penetrate that surface a little. And then you're not going to have to pull supports in there. It'll just print from that surface. So that's the first thing I would do is try to find some moments where you have some things floating off the surface that you can easily draw back in and just pinch onto the surface. And you, like I said, you may like where it is in the front. That's fine. Just get under here and kind of push this back and under. And you can do this a little bit easier with move topological, which I thought I was using, but I wasn't. Um, you can see how with move topological, you can drag these back a touch. These the ones that are on the bottom and just make sure that they're penetrating right don't have them not touching and on things like this guy coming to the back side we're going to hide the body for a second now coming to the back side using inflate and inflating some of this back side to where it's actually not open and then we'll turn the body on and see you can't really see that from the top but that's going to give you a lot more solidity that it's not going to have to try to find we're we're kind of filling in those holes and just do it on the back side where you can't see it and that'll help with some of that supporting stuff because especially with something like this um you, you're this is nightmare print world the other thing you may want to do here is get a um i wonder if i can just use curve let's see 
and go to do, 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 brushes curve tube where's curve tube there's curve snap curve multi tube is it what? curve bridge curve lathe curve surface curve tube there we go I'm just trying this. This might or might not work. Um, All right. Come here. Duplicate this. Delete lower. And now we can try it. Oh, there we go for some reason that was weird so we're gonna make this smaller and try this again all right annoying but we can still deal with it is that snapping to the body let's hide this body let's come back on here okay for some reason it just wants to do that fine we will take move topological we will drag this little groover up here and run this up the center if for some reason it's not snapping to the surface i might just have it set wrong but if you take a tube and run it up the center of this then you can actually close all those holes but in the print so you're making it a solid right by running the tube up the center uh, i'm sorry i don't know why my tube's not working but this if you don't necessarily have to have this hollow if you run a tube in it you know from back here this is going to look hollow but um it'll remesh much nicer it'll be a, you know instead of those being a cage which now you're going to have to go in and pick all these little supports out of filling that up to where it's solid and it just looks like those are going through that's going to be much more printable even though uh, i created this weird tube that isn't really working come on you and we're going to grab inflate and just whoop. Move, drag you down, back and under. That curve's still active. Let's go to our. Hmm, stroke curve function. Delete. There we go. Drag it in. And you see what I mean? Like from here, are you really going to tell the difference between those? Now, if this is, you know, a 16 inch figure, fine. But that's a good way of making something more printable is finding these moments that are just going to be a support nightmare and just turn them into something that's a little bit more solid. That'll help greatly. All right, now let's go in here and look around some more problem areas uh i would probably thicken that little post up because this is going to have a pretty good amount of weight and that's something that if you tap it that'll get knocked off very very easily same here i would boost thicken up those posts because see there's plenty of thickness here for that to hold on to um i would say though just because of gravity i think that you mirrored and used these. I would grab W, Y. Make sure I'm going to mask that off there. Oops. Really? What are you doing? Grab you. There we go. And see how that's floating a little? Come on. Hold down Alt and drag it. And see how that now looks a little bit more 
like gravity is pulling that down. Make sure your gravity on things are the same. That's not how to make it more printable, but it's easier. The other thing is here. If you look at your arm, you know, that's not touching anywhere. So you want to make sure that this is actually touching the arm, right? Now that's going to be connected, so that becomes much more printable. Obviously, you have to come and lower this chain because I just moved the little thing. <clears throat> Your chains are perfectly printable. They're connected. So anywhere you have things floating, just make sure they're touching, right? Because let's... Did I, did I move these somewhere? Oh, I see. These were all connected. <laughs> Sorry. All right, let's... Yes, that one. I don't have symmetry turned on. Why is that? Okay. Don't have answers. No, that one's actually in the right place. We'll cover that. When I was moving that around, I must have moved everybody around. Uh, all right. So once again, there you can see that um, that's not touching in places. I think we'll probably bring that in a little more. And then obviously we need to bring this guy up some. And just make sure it's touching. Now the other thing you can do is when you do this stuff, like, right, you're going to be looking at it from this angle. So if we come under here and we inflate this right here, just up under this, and really make sure that's a good, strong contact. Right, because no one's going to see that. Because from the top, here, let's turn transparency off, right? That's under that arm connection there. Right? So if you thicken that up, you know, no one will ever see that, but you're getting much more contact there. And that's going to help print better. Um, and that can be said for all of these, right? So up under this ankle just fill it in so it's completely touching there and you know you can come back and sculpt that so it looks like it's not touching but the more places you can make more solid connections you're going to have an easier printable object uh, let's see Your hand's pretty good, that's fine. Yeah, these area. Mm. New messages. Okay, so yeah, once again, like things like this, if they don't have to be hanging, you know, just have things like this touch the body or bring the body to it, just so it's not something that it has to think about supporting. Um, here, you know, just the space between the mouth and this tube. If you can take this and 
just move this in to where they're touching and then you come back in underneath this and fill it up some that becomes something that is much more printable right because that becomes a more solid connection point and the more places you can have more solid connection points the better off your print is going to turn out because it gives it fewer places to try to fail and you can see that's not dramatically different but you have a ton more material rolling over here underneath right um, and once again just little places like this right from here it can look like an open thing but if you come up under here take inflate and just kind of close that hole and get that meat sort of touching there no one's ever going to see the difference in that and now it's one less hole and it can look like a hole as long as it's not a hole it actually becomes much more printable or must much less drama while printing and so that comes back down to things like this little area in here how that goes back up and under if you just inflate that up and just kind of close some of those loose holes those are places that your machine isn't going to try to support right like that little hole it doesn't need to be a hole as long as it looks like there's separation there it doesn't have to go all the way through and if it doesn't go all the way through it's a shell and it's easier to deal with and you'll have much less failure issues and you can see you can compose it well so it doesn't look like something's going on and um, yeah so it's anytime you're getting things that are pinching up and under you just fill them in no one in the world's ever gonna well once again like if it's 14 feet tall sure you know you can stick your arm through that you're gonna need to do it 15 mold parts anyway so it doesn't matter but finding those little moments that um, you can fill in are gonna help yeah you know once again like i thought i'd turn this off like here you know you have this going down the center of the back and you can see i guarantee you that the v in that back goes all the way down right where you know so if we just take this flip it and you can see where right our our torso hold on i want to hide these guys real quick right you can see that you have air holes in here from where the torso isn't touching just come back in here clay tubes clay buildup and just fill it to where the back is penetrating here and like i said you're never going to see this but what that does, it allows, I mean, you can bring this all the way out here because that's, you're not seeing it from either side. Mm -hmm. But we're penetrating this tank now, right? you'll never see it there this can actually I mean this could come all the way out if you wanted it to but I'm going up past that thin point there so we don't get an air socket in there right and you can see how we just filled that up a little you're never gonna see it and now you don't have that air space going down in here you know once again if this is big enough to see this you can come in and pretend it's there you know just give it a little and like from up here it's 
Nip. You know, you're never going to see that. Smooth it. So I would run around and look for places like that. Now here, we are going to, how big is this? Oh, this is tiny. All right, we're going to take this and we are going to merge visible. Merge visible. So here we are in one part. And we are just going to, I'm just going to Dynamesh this. I'm not worried about the detail. That's why Dynamesh is a legitimate answer. Come here, boom. Remesh by Dynamesh. Do it at a million. I have things that are masked. You can do it. Unmask that. Let's try this again. A million. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, this isn't, these aren't really about undercuts. This is about floating air spaces that your machine is going to try to support internally and that just can be points for failure so the the more solid a shell that you can provide the easier it's going to be to print it's not really like when i'm talking about those areas that's not really about undercuts it's really about um a clean mesh so uh w q did that work? Stop that. Come on. No, those were masked. Hold on. Let's do that one more time. Remesh by Dynamesh. Some of those parts were still masked. Accent, Q, flip. So when you flip it, right, you're looking for as much cleanliness as possible. And you can see up here, look at all these little places where it intersects and it combines and it does weird stuff. This is the stuff that makes printing a nightmare, where... If you're down here, you can see that this is a nice clean open mask. You can see that, see right here where that's sort of where it's intersecting, right? So the bigger you can make this and the simpler you can make these shapes, the easier they will print. Does that make sense? Um, flip. So I would just do this. I'd Dynamesh it really small and figure out where the problems are. Um, you can see all this going back down into the throat. You know, honestly, you, you don't need that. I mean, look at how far deep that goes in there. No one in the universe is ever going to see that. Boom, Sculptures Pro, make this big. And just smoothing it together. And now, see those hoses and stuff? So now we're going to come out here, flip it. Ooh, well, I was painting with a pretty large brush there now, wasn't I? <laughs> but I think you see what I mean, where um, if these are just solid off those edges, and you're not doing all that cutting behind and under, it's going to be a more solid mesh. Oh my God, stop that. Turn back face masking off. 
Has Sculptures Pro on. All right. And you know, once again, like from there, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. Now I dynamesh this and it's low poly and blah, 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 blah. But um, I think you probably understand, or I hope you do. And so you can see all these holes if we just come in here. And once again, I'm just trying to do an inflation. Um, you can see that that creates far fewer points that you're going to have to do like these weird little internal supports if you ran a rod up there so this is solid when we flip this see all those weird little internal chain links and stuff we can get rid of all that by running a tube up the center that now becomes something that isn't difficult to to print right does that make sense am i making sense to anyone out there <laughs> yeah i think so all right yeah here's another thing and this is just through my decimation you can see how you had these little itty bitty things in there that were holding that together all right let's go back to your model and look oh no it was a flat plane you need some thickness here because that when we dynameshed it, do you see how those planes joined together? And it created, uh, where did it go? There. See, and that's telling us that there wasn't enough thickness in that plane to retain the dynamesh. So that's a, a big warning sign for your print, that that's going to be um, a place where you are likely to fail. So, really thin areas and um, lots of big undercut or not undercuts but chatter and noise that's going to become something like when you flip this you really want to see a nice clean open surface you you don't want to see this stuff right because this is the stuff that's going to kill you as far as um, printability goes because a lot of the times you're going to have all of your minima and your points supported on the outside but you have this garbage on the inside and this is where it's going to fail you're going to have your print and then all of a sudden it's going to shear off at this weird angle and it's all stuck onto your your um, build platform and so yeah you can see this failed on all three of them because this was just, that little plate was just too thin. Right? You can see how it's not even there. Not even there. So any thin, flat places are prime places for failure. This stuff where there's lots of internal holes and stuff, it's going to have to try to support that stuff. And if you're not in there and you do it, by hand on every one and then that you know how do you get it out you get in you got your little scalp on your cut and little supports out just just make it look like it's doing it right you know because this is now solid and i can come back and if we had done this from the beginning you would have just ran a post up that center but you know you can just come back and make it look like it's going over and under and sell that sort of story you know and once again from back here it's going to look like it's weaving i think those are the big the big issues any questions i don't think they're here so i'm going to say no oh okay you answered all my questions. All right. Well, that's that's the important part. As long as Henry's got it down, <laughs> we got it sorted. All right. Oh, God. I am now going to take my first potty break. <laughs> Henry, if you could keep control of these animals. <laughs> I can't do it. I never can. Um, but I'll okay, tap, scream into a pillow until yeah, you're Tap back. dance for him. You know, that'll help. All right. I'll okay. be right back. <laughs> Oh, you guys can't see me tap dancing. Why am I still doing this?
I guess while he's gone, I'll answer um, Cabasiano's question. Uh, in large sculptures like this, when do you want to use uh, Dynamesh, Z Remesh, uh, etc.? Uh, and I think the answer is uh, you want to Dynamesh and Z Remesh to keep control of your mesh while you're working on the individual components like the chains, the staff, um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and finish each component completely, no matter how many polys it has left. You know, it could be 10, 15 million polys per component. It doesn't matter. Um, but when you're finished each one and the model looks complete, merge them all down into one subtool and then Dynamesh by Union. It's in the gizmo. Uh, at that point, you'll have a completely finished model ready for 3D printing, but with way too many polys. So that's when you decimate. Uh, and we try to decimate down to 1 million less if it works. Um, one million is about the maximum we try to go for for 3D printing. Got that. That's done. Look at me go. Ah! <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> I'm a mess. We know. That's why we're here. Right? We're not here to learn. We're here to laugh at you. You're a comedian. <laughs> Hold on. Before our next thing. Uh oh, where'd it go? Is that it? Is that one? Oh, yeah. Ah, I haven't actually seen these pictures big. <laughs> So what you're saying is that this is just huge. So there's actually a lot of space in this. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, that's a 3090, which is just massive. They are physically huge. Okay. Um, and you got the Corsair something something 15 or 1600 watt power supply, yes. which is also, I mean, the power supply alone that's is larger than here. your entire current computer. Oh. Yeah, that's the area down at the bottom. It just looks so calm and empty. Yeah, your entire computer that you're running right now would basically fit in that slot. So you're saying those nocturnes are really large too, huh? Those are pretty big. Uh, Nocturas, yeah, yeah, they are. Uh, they are beefy boys. But I thought they didn't give me enough RAM. I'm like, what are all these empty RAM slots? <laughs> Sorry, guys, I haven't seen these pictures large. I can only get them on my phone, so. Well, it looks like we have good airflow, though. Didn't you get the inside of the case painted green? Where's your green? And I think it wound up white. Oh. I know, that's what I thought. Yeah, I thought <laughs> we went with green. What happened? You're right. I thought we ordered green. Okay. I mean, it's probably for the better. It's not going to look like a Christmas miracle, but. <laughs> but Christmas miracle is kind of the humor. I don't know. Call me silly. I was going for funny, you know. <laughs> uh, one, the 3090s are. Um... God, look how thick it is. I mean, it takes up like three ports, just its thickness. What do you call that? Fat. What do you call that when you connect two NVIDIA cards together? SLI? Yeah. yeah. You can you can SLI the 3090s only, not the 60s, 70s, 80s. Um, but there's absolutely no point to it. There's no technical benefit whatsoever. Linus Tech Tips will assure you of that. It does take up two slots, doesn't it? I, it actually takes up three and a half slots. Wow. It is a beefy boy. It makes girl. that Elgato card <laughs> just look super to. thin. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Either three and a half or two and a half slots. It might be two and a half slots. But yeah, they are huge. So I saw an interesting thing about why. Because remember when we were looking at it, they had it where you could get it where the back was up here and the video cards are sitting in this direction. Does that have the you caught up? was up here. 
Right. So like all of this stuff, they rotate at the motherboard. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. I guess that's a ventilation thing. Because I guess this is just a big heat wall. Yeah. I mean, sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It it just looks so... I mean, for as much as that's there, it just like looks so clean and simple and like there are only three moving parts in it, you know? Am I hallucinating? No. I mean, good. Computers shouldn't have a ton of moving parts. That's Less really... for you to break. Right, and I do break things, that's for sure. Look at that. That's all nice and clean. Their cable management's pretty tight, isn't it? It better be. Right. <laughs> I mean that that's your airflow. If they've got cables everywhere collecting dust in front of the, you know, boards and all that and blocking airflow. Bad. It's bad We lip. have room for three other things right here that we could jam in there. Think of something fun that we could jam in there. <laughs> no. I'd rather not waste your channels on something like that. What, something fun? Like Well, all right, we can get a uh I don't mean like an electric light show. I'm saying something now, good. <laughs> a ten thousand dollar Badger card, which will let you install, I think, either eight or sixteen M dot twos. Mm. That sounds pretty exciting. Yeah. So oh, we could put uh, just a ton of hard drive space in there, and it'll only cost you like another twenty thousand. Oh well, that's that's no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. All, All right, right, guys, you Back guys need, it. I need 20 people to sign up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry. That was my, I have, I haven't seen the inside of my computer except big where I could actually look at it. So they took these pictures of it before they shipped it. So we are going to have to, so that's a glass panel. I have to put something on there. The white's a little plain. I'm going to have to go in there with a Sharpie and just draw on it, I think. did. They, I mean, did they even send you a picture with the side panel on it? No. No. I guess because I think it's like a darker, isn't like a, it's like a gray black glass or right. is it totally clear? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see in a couple of days. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely think I'm going to have to go in and Sharpie little cartoon characters all over it or something. Cause <laughs> we'll get some <laughs> stickers. Um, so while you've got your browser open, download Cena's. Wait, there's three new ZTLs for you to download, but the one you're about to crit is from Cena. Um, he's next in the order, but submitted a newer version a couple minutes ago. Okay, so are those outside of this folder? Uh, they are outside of this folder. Okay. Yes, indeed. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop. Hello. <laughs> Uh, while that's downloading, somebody asked the specs. Make believe TV. It's a dual twenty. Is it twenty four twenty six? Because was twenty eight the highest well. core? Is a dual twenty six? Two twenty eight core Xeons. I don't remember their exact specifications. Two hundred fifty six gigs of RAM, a thirty ninety. <laughs> 1500 watt power supply an absolute monster it's an absolute monster <laughs> uh, it's so funny I love it what do you mean just extract the friggin files oh my god you're killing me So confused. All right. Boom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There she is. <clears throat> I, I use a lot of CPU. <laughs> you try to remesh a 40 million poly model. It takes forever. All right. Cena here. I have to 
This is really annoying. Though. Scene is here. Um, in chat, at least. Right. Or they were. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of that hair. And let's look at this head. Second thing we're going to do is get rid of the paint. All right. Can you decimate to more than a million polys? Yeah, of course you can. How? Uh, under Decimation Master. Um, um, I never use that because it's in the UI. Yeah. Um, isn't it like right here? No, it's right here. Yeah, if you actually go into Decimation Master, you can um, see these are your custom points, but up here you can um, do percentages. This is thousands of polys, right? So, like you could do if you do 200. Or 2,000, that's 2 million, right? Because this is thousands. So that would be a 200,000, so you decimate current. But to use this, you do have to pre-process. The nice thing about doing this out here is that this just becomes, you know, a fast hit. And honestly, you don't really need more, too much more than a million. Um, sometimes if it's a super, super detailed model, you do need... Um, all right. Okay, fine. Um, if it's a super detailed model, you know, sometimes you do need more than a million polys, but I find it rare. I find it rare, especially if you're going to printing, right? Because once again, like, let's take these pores, you know, all these pores and stuff. The thing about pores and printing, like for gaming and stuff, I understand the pores for printing it. The problem with pores and all the skin texture is that it starts to look like just a rough surface. Um, and even when you get exquisite detail and stuff, the problem is, you know, the second you try to paint it or tint it or tone it, the light, it just it's never the same scale as an actual pore you know so it tends to make the surfaces rough and that's why in it it becomes noise it just becomes chatter on the surfaces and you lose a lot of your reflectivity and so um i find that putting uh oh, oh no you know I don't think I should keep this tool right here in the center of this UI. In this smaller screen, my... Did it, so what we just did is we resized all sub-tools. Or we, made a, we might have hit ZBrush scale unity. I mean, at least ratio was on. Yeah, so at least they all went to the same scale, I guess. That's really annoying, though. Right. Sliders the subtool. Oh, look, I made it 1.38 millimeters. <laughs> uh, and the problem with that is that some of those are like four step transitions. So you, you can't just hit undo, you have to go through and undo it on every subtool. Yeah, this is a dangerous thing to have out here. Normally, it sits a little bit over here on my other monitor, which is visually wider. Okay. So let's once again hide this. I think that the back of her head, and you have hair, so that's probably why it didn't matter. But the back of her head should be a little bit more, like a little wider. Because most people don't have cone heads. And that also is what gives you um, this sort of feel is the transition between the ball of the back head and the oval of the front right so if we're thinking about breaking this up into 
little shapes. You have a round head, and then you have an oval that kind of pies into that head. And that's what gives you your face area, right? And so this goes sort of like this and like that, and that's where you get this transition. So I think that you just got a little pin heady. But once again, you're putting hair on here so you weren't really looking at it from this angle. It just seems like we're a wee bit of a pinhead. Um, now, once again, if you were sculpting a pinhead, that's fine. And pinhead being a technical term, not me making fun of it. Um, but you can see by just pumping that out just a touch, you're getting a wee bit more of the shape of the head. Um, I mean, everything's in the right place. It's looking good. If this is for printing, I'd be careful about the pores. You know, I think that um, it can come across as just a little, oh, don't do that with Sculptures Pro turned on. I think you'll wind up with a better print without so much of the poor texture. But the face is good. I mean, it's in proportion. It's nice. Hair-wise, I mean, you know, using the fiber brushes and stuff, if you're going to print, it's very difficult to do. You now have to come back through, inflate this, dynamesh it together, and then go back in and kind of sculpt it. And we did some good results with it. I don't know if you all remember in one of the critiques, there was sort of like this troll or dwarf guy. And we sat there and tried to figure out how to inflate it and stuff. And it worked where if you were going to printing, I would use less fibers and have them bigger. So as they cross over one another, it becomes more of a, a rhythm than hair. Because this would, as it is now, you know, you'd never print that. That would just be absolute fuddly chaos um, but you know the face is good the lines are good like I said I think you need to pull the back of that head out just a touch Let's, you know, see the the painting This is always the problem with painting, is that unless you really spend a ton of time working on your skin textures and stuff, it always looks like a model that's been painted. Um, and Eric would be far better at giving recommenda recommendations for things like that. Um, if you want it, some information on that, I'm sure that we can arrange a time for Eric to show up in critiques and talk to you about that. Um, is that something that you want? Uh, because, like I said, I don't look, hold on. New messages. Um, I'm seeing one, yes, we want. Someone is adamantly yes. Uh, but frankly, I missed the question because I was typing. No, I was saying that I don't really have good information on painting models. That's something that we would have to see if we can dig up Eric and see if mm -hmm. he can answer that question. He's he's here. Is he? Yeah, he's he's in chat. We'll have Eric join voice chat. It's up to him. If he would like to. Um, in the meantime, uh, Senna does have a question about the lips mm -hmm. uh, not specifically just is the detail true which i assume just means does it look good can you guys hear me i can uh. actually the lips are quite nice i mean i think once again you know the texturing i find like for a 3d model if you were printing this i think this is way too much right because what happens is you lose your surfaces and that because people tend to want to over texture 
printed objects. And sadly, the smoother and the more obvious the planes are, the better off you are going to be with a printed model. Like if you were going to, um, if you were going to do this for rendering, that's something that um, Eric would have more information about. Uh, for a printed model, I think it's going to look like, you know, uh, someone who's been in the desert for three weeks and their lips are all cracky and mangled. Because, I mean, if you think about this in scale, those are like three millimeter deep cracks in your lips. That's what I look like after I've been like hudging out in the sun for a week. There would be blisters too, I'm sure. Um, if you want some, my Ooh, opinion about painting. I'm going to turn painting. There. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Yeah, okay. So um, I learned how to paint in ZBrush way back when in the old days from uh, Madeline Spencer. Nah, um, and she learned a lot while well, from actually traditional sculptors over a gentle giant. Um, the trick to getting a believable skin in ZBrush, I mean, it's very tough because skin is so much about, you know, the subtlety of specularity and also the subsurface. subsurface yeah. But you can fake subsurface in ZBrush. The trick is to paint in successive layers of color. So I'm trying to figure. There's a there's a really good book that um, Madeline did. One of the, one of the older ZBrush books, where um, she goes through the process. But basically, on the on the base layer, you have this like ex you want to think of like building up in terms of color, right? I'm just talking about color layers of skin coming from the the deepest levels of the derma, which is going to be a lot of muscle and you know that kind of color and then basically painting one layer over another in terms of color getting less and less um saturated but seeing some of that variation underneath the skin yeah so that character creation book is really good and also yeah those i think that one is it's got some really good uh, skin tutorial stuff on it. So it, it's an older book. So you could probably pick it up off of uh, Amazon. Amazon um, or, you know, an independent bookstore if you're so inclined. Yeah, it's funny. Um, <laughs> I do have that book. I was going to say there was a book. And I didn't realize yeah. that it was Mads. And, you know, it's like I do a lot. Of, like what I do when I'm painting stuff is I'll do a, a basic poly paint just to get sort of the diffuse colors in ZBrush. And then I export and do a lot of the painting in like... Uh, uh, substance or marmoset or something like that. I use, I tend to use substance. Um, I, don't, I don't know where what the hell that is, but <laughs> medical and say, oh, I see you're on Amazon. Um, it's it's uh, but really what it comes down to is painting successive layers of color on top of each other, and then that way you can fake a subsurface kind of quality in ZBrush. There's the skin is surprisingly there's a lot of variation in the color across the uh, across the face. Does that make sense? Mm hmm. Foundations and couple therapy. I don't think that's the book. What are you looking at, man? <laughs> Madeline Spencer in books. Uh, look under Scott Spencer. Oh, sorry. It's an older book, so you know things have changed. I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> Look, Scott Spencer is ZBrush. Yeah, that's... <laughs> oh, there we go. There you go. Yeah, actually, the, the all the books are really good, but um, the character creation ones, I think, have the most... I agree. ...in it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. The actually. digital anatomy one's really good too. I was an editor on that book. I think I was editor on both of them. I can't remember. It was a long time ago. Yeah. But this is a good book. Actually, I have this one. You're right. I think that how to lay down the translucent or because you can't create translucency, how do you create the appearance of substance? subsurface yeah. scattering it, yeah. 
it's possible to do subsurface in ZBrush, but the workflow is so weird and the result is usually extremely unsatisfying <laughs> that it's almost not worth it. You know what I mean? Because it's like a BPR. It's like a very fake kind of translucency. Yeah. Using their weird rendering technology. Um, so. Yeah. There you go. That's the book you're looking for. 2008. Look at that. It can't I, actually be $82. Is it really? Yeah, it's I think $82. that's someone selling it. I don't think that... Um... Oh, here's more buying choices. Um, yeah. Yeah, 16. 16, 16. Yeah, it looks yeah, like you can get used one for 16. Here's a brand new one for 97 or 98. They're hey, very somebody, happy with those books. Well, it's because somebody sent me a picture old. of my ZBrush book that's been translated into Russian. Awesome. <laughs> I, know. I, I just imagine that Black Widow is reading it every night. <laughs> Getting real excited. Of course, she's dead now, but you know, weird. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> I've been rewatching the Marvel Universe because I'm bored. Have you been watching, um, what's it called? WandaVision? No, I haven't watched that yet. I'm watching all the Marvel movies in order. Wow, that's commitment to the gig there. I'm up to Iron Man 3. I'm not even that much of a Marvel fan, but you know. All right, anyways. Got you gotta do talk. something, right? <laughs> you gotta do something. Yeah, I've been stuck in this room for a year, you know? Right? I know. I can't believe it. Like, they made a comment that it's been two years since Notre Dame burned down. I'm like, no, that can't be true. It's like a year, right? Nope. <laughs> two years. Like, last year just disappeared. I don't know. I don't even know what happened. It's just gone. Bizarre. It's just, it just I, I, I still don't believe that. I think it's only one year. <laughs> I refuse to believe it's two years. I can't believe that. That doesn't even make sense to me. Hey, my niece is a disgruntled teen, and it's hard to believe that 2016, she was only 11 years old. Right? How long somebody... ago? Did... All right, I'm, I'm, I'm muting myself. You have derailed him, Eric. This is my nightmare. <laughs> no, Andy's no, got no. caps lock on. Oh, oh wait, did I, did I screw him up? What have you done? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, 2019. That is just, that's not true. It's, it just can't be true. It was I don't a wormhole. It. It's not true. Science, et cetera, et cetera. Not true. Um, solar flares. It's not true. It, Magnets, how do they work? You know, It's a, it's a fallacy. It's not yeah. true. Not true. Don't believe it. Okay. All right, so, so the next question is about the eyes. Same, same as the lips when you're done with them. Let's talk about the eyes. The anatomy of the lips is good. I think that the texture is too much for printing. Um, the eyes, I the only thing I would say about the eyes is I think that the bag's a little heavy on the outside without there being under skin. Um, and what I mean by that is see how you got this airspace right here. It's not actually following the eyeball. See how you have that gape right there? That only happens in really old people where your eye little gap away from your eye. So this right is actually touching the eyeball. And that's how you get that almond shape too, is it's the the almond shape comes from the thin skin stretching around the eyeball, but when you open it, it's cutting at a lower angle, and that's how you get the almond shape. Also, the almond shape comes from your eyeballs, obviously not round. So it has this, it sticks out a little farther right here as it's going over the whole uh, cornea hump, right? So just by pushing that in, and I'm going to pull it out just a little where the little cornea hump is. Well, let's bring this on. And you can see that by just seizing that up against the eyeball, um, it's a little bit more convincing. Hold on. Now let's go back. 
There we go. Right? You get that little gap. And it makes it look like it's drooping right here. And once again, you can find eyes that do that. I'm sure people's eyes droop. But you got to think that for the most part, the lower part of the almond shape is going to be over the cornea hump. And then this is going to come back in so the shape of the eye is directly related to the shape of the eyeball and I think that that's probably just a touch high mm -mm. Mm -mm. I feel like we have too much outer eyeball and not enough inner eyeball. And that could be because that is too far out. Mm, that's tricky. Something's going on there. Good. But do you see what I mean? If you were looking at the eyeball. Yep, nope. It just seems like this is puffy right there. Hold on, let's turn on transparency. stop come on hmm. so the center of your eye is usually the outside of your mouth mm. I guess maybe it's it's creeping in a little Well, maybe it is the shape of the eyeball itself. Here, let's look at this straight down. It's this little hump right here that is, do you see what I mean? this is really close to the surface if we're looking at the depth of the ridge around the eye right we have and this is like the lip and then it just sort of disappears right here and then you have that and then it just seems to get really thin right here So, what I'm thinking is maybe our eyes are just a little close together, maybe? Okay, first of all, that's way too strong. think that might be solving some of that. 
And I think actually this is probably a little bit farther in here. And it's something about the shape of the eye right here that's bothering me. And I think... I'm not seeing it clearly. Because <laughs> once then this comes down to what you're using as reference and stuff, but I just have this feeling this that like the eyeballs just sitting a little too close to this outside detail here I'm feeling like this stuff needs to come kind of over a little more and then in and we don't have a lot of geometry here so this is tricky and once again, here I go mangling other people's eyes. All right, that's, it's hard to do with no geo. But do you see what I mean? It just seems to pitter out here and sit really close. And I just feel like there's more stuff going on here. Like this, maybe it's this needs to come out. And in turn, that gives this a place to dive under. Something with this intersection right here is bothering me. And I can't figure it out. And there's not enough geometry for me to go in there and sculpt the flood of floods around. So, Because from the front, it looks fine. Like even from here, it looks OK. And so I can't tell. Sorry, I can't tell you what's bothering me about it. Or I can't figure out what's bothering me about it. Let me. But you can see with the eyeball here, this is this is what's bothering me. With the eyeball. This feels like you have your lump, and then this is going back and down and under, right? This is cutting back. But here it looks like the angle of the ball is infringing on this. It doesn't look like there's enough meat here to actually be doing what it's doing. And so maybe it's the shape of the eyeball that's bothering me. Like, I don't know that... Maybe they're cross-eyed. Is that what it is? You know, maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's the lump is a touch. So the lump was a little farther in. So it's giving me too much meat out here. I think you may just be a touch cross-eyed and that's what's driving me nuts. And that gives us lazy Nozomi. Boop. Mm. All right, so hold on. Now we need this preset toolbar. Where's my preset toolbar? Oh, it's over here. I'm going to drag you over here. Put you right there. Let's hide that. Let's hide that. And we want this. 
control one. Did that not hook? Why are you not hooking? Well, that's annoying. You can't use those together. Isn't that funny? Okay. I mean, you didn't hook to um, Swordsoft. Hmm, maybe hooking to Swords. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so we'll hit that. Control 1. Did that flash? Nope, sword soft just cuts it off. Interesting. Oh well. I might not call that a window. Right. But you can see like the center of your eyes, your mouth is a little thin, but that's not a big deal. Right? So usually the edge of your mouth is the center of your eye. I think the eyes were just kind of cross-eyed, so it looked like there was more meat out here, and that's what was bothering me. See how the meat's sort of even now? And that allows that to come back in, but we can do W, boom, W, come on you. Maybe this does help as a touch. Move them just a little bit in. Let's hide those guys. Move them just a little bit closer together. And now that brings the center of your eye a little closer to the middle of the mouth. Your meat and the meat's on the other side. I think that's what it was. I think it was cross-eyed a little. So now the eyes are looking a wee bit more center of the world. Now look, we have a little bit more meat in there. All right. I think that was what it was. And I tend to think that normally there's another, like this is muscle here. So usually that's not just a tall freestanding gap. This sort of makes a little triangle here. And it can be small and subtle, but usually that fills in a wee bit more. It's not just a, a hole or a scoop. So, yep, I think that's what it was. I think that one, your eyes were just a wee bit cross-eyed. And then, this was scooping out, which was making it look like this was floppy. Yeah, I think that's it. And then that needs to kind of not scoop up there. Like this should go under that. And there's just not enough geometry right now for me to do it right. So we're just going to do it like that. Boom. Right, they're not meeting totally flat together. There's a little bit of step there. Oops. Yeah, this is hard to do with no geometry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's better than... So I think that was the thing. I think that your eyeballs were just a wee bit too wide in the sockets. And they were cross-eyed. So that gave us too much room out here compared to in here. And... That line needs to be cleaned back up. I made it lumpy, but, um, and by this moving in a little, it allowed us to take this step, right? 
and bring this under this just a touch. Right? And now that's resolving a wee bit more realistically. I'm, there's not enough geometry to get in there, and every time I smooth it, it just turns it into a gloop. So I'm hoping that that was helpful. And I think filling this in and giving yourself just a wee bit more meat in here. Here, let's do this. Let's. Because I think it's right on the outside. I just hide our eyeballs a little bit. Ooh, Ooh what is that? There's my eye socket. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. And if we just come back in here and do this, I think this is going to solve something for me. <laughs> All right. So there it's not gaping. Now I have that lip so I can judge my thickness. And then this doesn't go in quite so thin. It retains its thickness, but it goes under this one, right? I just don't have enough geometry to put there. Does that make sense? I think I think that's what was driving me nuts. All right. New message. Oh, there's a lot of new messages. Come on, what is going on over there? Ah, okay, there we go. Any other questions? I don't know, did that answer your question? <laughs> I think that's it. I haven't seen anything else from Cinna. Okay. So who's next? Next is Nicolay. Mm. Okay, come on. What are we doing? Oh, Nicolay. There we go. Frank. Boop. All right. You did a really nice job with these transitions. This is good. Your foot scissors are good. Um. I think that you're a little bit um, like the shape of this is a little too hard. This transition isn't really happening. Like you've scooped it out. I think that, uh, you know, this is coming up and under. So you're getting that layer. But this, like, unless this is flexed, it's not really. It's a little bit more subtle. Like this is just a really sharp ridge line. And I think that it's here. Once again, let's go back to our anatomy for sculptors. And let me see if I can find an armpit area.
to see how this is coming back up and in. And I know this is a male, but it's the same, it's the same muscle set, right? And so this is coming up and rolling over, right? That transition, see how there's pinching here because the arms are down. So you're getting a little pinchy meat in there. Um, and yours is more um, almost like your arm sticking out and flexing. You're going to get this curve. But um, how do I get back to here? You see what I mean? This is there's meat here, right? These muscles are coming across and connecting under the deltoid sort of above and in between the bicep right they're sort of weaving together there and you can see how this is closed down and you're getting sort of that the meat and i think that we're missing that here right we're missing that transition um these muscles are actually coming up and in here Uh, I missed something that you did that's relevant to a question. The silhouette window. This one? I'm waiting for it to pop up on my screen. Bit of a lag. Oh, is that what they mean by silhouette window? They want to know if that's a 2021 update or if it's been there for a while. That's definitely been there for a while. It's been there. Yeah, it's been there at least the last couple updates. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was here all of last year. So it might have been a 2020 update. Well, I mean, I've lost so many years. It was probably a 2019 update. <laughs> <laughs> so do you see just instantly the difference here where we're kind of giving that fat pinch, right? Because the arms are still sort of down. And it's weaving in with the, the bicep that's interacting in there. And then these are your pec muscles. And then the breast is that orange that Michelangelo would just glue onto. I was just about to say, I was gonna say he who shall not be named, but. <laughs> um, and here you get the fat fill there right and then you can do your transition to whatever you want your breast shape to be but that's actually coming up and in yeah does that make see this here as opposed to come on boop right see your pec muscles are not actually going into the armpit here they're kind of connecting up here. So just kind of think about what's happening with the actual anatomy. These are behind the deltoid. And they're coming into the armpit pretty straight actually at this point. Right, you kind of get that meaty transition there and then this happens it's sort of a pinch the last one was better <laughs> Mm, what are you doing? Mm -mm. Are we quick saving? No, okay. So I would say just kind of wrap your head around the sub anatomy first. And what's actually happening with those pec muscles. Because the male pec muscles and female pec muscles 
are the same pec muscles, really. They don't, you know, what's happening in these intersections are the same in the male and female. Um, and that's what Michelangelo was trying to prove all along. Nuts. Same muscles, plus one orange or two oranges. <laughs> two Greek friends. If you're lucky. <laughs> Uh, just so funny um right i hope that makes some sense because the breast fat isn't the muscle you're getting that happening underneath In that, the muscles are what are creating this intersection in here. Stoop, when you get that little wrinkly bit going down there, right? And then the breast fat comes in and that defines the shape of your breast. And if you just get a half dome and project it just like an orange, you can become a world famous artist. <laughs> Come on, what are you doing? <laughs> but hopefully that makes sense. Are we here? Is uh, Nikolai here? Um, um, they are not here, so I'm going to say on behalf of them that made perfect sense. Okay, thank you. And, I mean, this is obviously a stylized face, so dealing with proportions makes no sense. You know, obviously the eyes are blown out too big, but your eyes are great. Um, I would say... You know, once again, when the caricature stuff, or caric... When it is not trying to be real... Um, things like, you know, does this intersection, woo, does this intersection happen? You know, it, I think that that's a little proud, but once again, it's a character thing. So who knows, you know, that's a, cause that's forming with that muscle there. And cause the lips are kind of giving us little ducky lips. You're not getting that meat there. But that's all character. Ooh. The disadvantage of low poly models, too, is you touch smooth and they blow up. So as far as the face goes, that's, you know, the eyes are obviously too big, so, but that's your style. So that's not an issue. I think that this was the thing that is the thing that you really needed to look at. And that is this pec muscle um, was just in the wrong place or it wasn't there. Right, because it's going under your deltoid. Your biceps coming in there. That's happening there. And I think that this is a very good illustration to um, show you. Right, you can see how the muscles are. You know, it's the same pec muscles. You're just getting that the fatty deposits. Do, 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 do. Good, good image. Good, good. I'm really fond of these books because of how they are doing this on real anatomy and they're showing you the planes of how things are working. I think this is a good reference stuff. You can see here, that's what's creating that armpit. You're not getting that just massive scoop there. And I think your rib cage is a little proud. I think you got a little inset there. It just has a little bit more roundness to it. It's not concave. And it's funny because I always talk about, think of these things as planes and layers. And that's another nice thing about that book is that it really allows you to see where these planes are intersecting. Yeah. yeah, I 
think that's your issue. The armpit. Because the rest of the <coughs> excuse me, the rest of the anatomy is nice. And I mean you have it you have it right here, right? You know, this is right going under the deltoid. That looks good. Um There might be a little more meat here. This is always, the crotch is always a tricky place because in all reality, there's just not a whole lot of connective tissue down here. This is like a big area of airspace. So in all reality, your buttocks may intrude on this just a touch more instead of being flat there. Because these are actually connecting up in here. And that's how you can see the buttocks from the front often. You know, if there's a lot of airspace here, you can actually see the buttocks from the front. And that happens because these are inserting in here and coming out. They don't just end right there. Boop. Boop. No, it's tight. It looks good. I mean, your anatomy's really in the right places your armpits were just a little weird and you cut your buttocks off a wee bit but that's that's all good awesome sauce two thumbs up okay next is diego do i have diego's here you should uh, it was in the original folder, Gladiator. Look for a Gladiator. Okay, this is Diego. I'm assuming. Yeah, Diego. I was on something that didn't say Diego. Looks great. It's a lot of fun. Your um, plume is super cool. It's nice. They were stiff horse hair, but who cares? Um, I would say don't be lazy. Because obviously you got um, like this and you drew it out and then you positioned it. Well, when you have things going over and under, see how these two intersect? Don't get lazy. Um, move topological and just make sure that things that are actually in front of things are actually in front of things and things that are behind things are behind things. So that doesn't change the look of that much except for the fact that those aren't interweaving now right and you can see that up here you kind of just pushed it in you were like i like the silhouette and i'm done <laughs> don't get lazy kind of come out here and get the things that are going under under and the things that are going over over and make sure that if they cross over one another they actually cross over like you can see how you're interweaving here a little now at the end of the day, is everyone going to see that? No, but their subconscious is. And um, if you don't do it, your their brains are going to be a lot more happy with it, right? And they may not even know why, but have faith in me on this one. Your brain catches it, right? So just make sure that as, you know, obviously this one was supposed to be weaving in and behind something. Let's make sure that it does weave in and out of whatever it's weaving in and out of but make sure that it you know if it's doing it make sure that these things are telling the same story right that's going around that's coming down and in and just spend the time and make sure that the things that are weaving in and out are weaving in and out and that they're not just randomly crisscrossing and flibber flabbing around. Because if you get lazy, it looks like you got lazy. And when you spend so much time to get all this other stuff right, just spend that little extra time and make sure the stuff... Because honestly, back here it looks... Come on. You know, back here it looks great. For the most part, you're telling the same story. There are just a couple places you can clean up these edges a touch. <clears throat> Right, but it looks good this side is better 
but once again up here oops up here you know what's happening this is just chatter waddle so make sure that like, that doesn't need to go anywhere so just push that one back and in let's bring this one out simplify and we're going to push that back a little and we're going to pull this one out a little so when you start doing this and you're trying to get the nice flowy crossy ovary thing going down so like you have 15 pieces here and none of them are part of anything that's up front right so you want to make sure you get rid of this stuff bring this one out no come on Ooh, that's the one I wanted to bring out not in take you back bring you back you see you just have tons of parts of some of them we're gonna bring you up we're gonna make sure that you're behind that one so that little lip is definitely over that one and now you need to decide what's happening next it looks like this one is in front so we're gonna push this we're going to push this one back and that one back and this is in the front that one's under that this one's behind that and so just come through with move topology and make sure to get rid of some of this chatter and make it make sense right so down here it's all just chatter so what's going on there And you see how just even a little clean up there makes that look a little better, right? Okay, now let's look at this guy. He's fun. Your anatomy's good. I mean, it's like big and goofy and fun. I <laughs> like your chicken bone arms. That's good. You you almost have this right here. Let's come in here. Right, you know these are supposed to be pressing into that surface, obviously. Um, let's just do this real quick. Where are our rings? I'm just gonna hide these for a second, and then we're gonna go back to here. So think about what's going on there. I'm just gonna take slash, and we're gonna just. We have our cut. It's being pinched together. Now let's turn those little groovers back on so we can see where they are. Okay. So we're going to pinch this together, touch, and then this will start to open up. Open up, slash. And then these are cutting in and pinching. So we want that to cut back and in. Cut back and in. Back and in. Back and in. And instead of going all the way around it, this is cutting under. So that's going to be a little proud, right? And then you're going to have, let's turn transparency on. And then you're going to have this be where it's pinching in. Mm -hmm. I'll be back in just a second. Okay. You see how that's pulling that in. And then these are where it's plunging under. Oops, somehow I moved that. <laughs> so different things are happening there, right? This is pinching this meat together and then it's penetrating that meat. So don't just make it, oops, 
don't just make it a line that's going around it accentuate what's happening and then it'll read just see how it looks like it's pinching there and then it's binding this up and pinching these things together it's not just a line around it does that make sense And then your two faces are actually good. They're going up and under. I think. And this is where twist works nicely, but you don't really have enough geometry here to do twist super cleanly. Instead of cutting that back and in, just SK twist it around and it gives you sort of a nice gum feeling. See how it's rolling that edge kind of back over the meat of the tooth. And that reads a little bit more like it's kind of punching in and out. Your footses are fun. You have nice clear layers. Yeah, it looks great. I might. I might give this just like a sole. Oops, that is not that. And like a toe cap. Because if it's if you're not going to do feet, at least make it seem like you thought about it for a second. And just giving it like a sole and a toe cap. You're saving some of that, well, what the hell's going on with the toe thing? And it just finishes it off a touch. Mm -hmm. You know, that could be a soft boot, but it's not a mitten toe, if that makes sense, right? It's not like you didn't bother to finish out the feet. At least now you made it look like um, you thought about the finish and that it's a little soft leather boot is sort of how it looked to me. I think I would probably punch those through and sculpt an eye. Or just even give it an eye lid or something in there where there's something going on past this. Because right now it looks a little like Darth Vader the Punisher sort of thing. And I'm not getting... Because on all this I'm getting that low-tech sort of feel. And then the helmet, you know, with these three grates in the front, it almost looks like a, a Space Marine... You know, they have that common, like, little great thing, and you're not seeing the eye in there. Where if... Um, sinking in my chair.
Hold your hand up to the camera for a second. Am I out of focus? Yeah. You're looking ethereal. Did it work? Not really, did it? It's still a bit off. How's that? Is that better? Find out in a minute. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay. Darn out of focus. I might be off the mark on this. That's why I'm checking. sort of farther back in there. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know if I feel better about that. You might be right. It's just looking a little space marine-y to me, and, um, or Darth Vader-y, space marine-y. Something's going on there that, um, my, you, where are you? Okay. I don't know, does that make sense? <laughs> Y'all are grasso. On behalf of them, yes. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. There's just so much nice soft detail here. I feel like you need to address the face of the mask a bit. I don't know if the eyes are the answer, but something. Make it look a little bit less like Darth Vader the Punisher. Yes. The pose is fun, looks great. Yep, I think you could just see the difference here where that looks like that's sort of pinching it together and going in. Where here it looks like they're straight bars and they've just been pressed in. So change a little bit of the directionality of the pinching of the meat together. And I think that'll be a nice sell. Nope, looks great. Yay, team. Um, all right. Next up, Olga. Olga? Olga. You're up here. Nope, you're right here. Uh -huh. Hello. Hello. How, How are, are you? you? Very good. And yourself? N not bad. Awesome. Okay. First thing, don't be scared to have your layers touch. Right? Because this would be on... See how it's laying on the cloth now? As opposed to sitting up and off. And I think the same can be... Oops. Same be said for you. Let's just squish you in just a touch. Oh, I did something weird there, didn't I? Are there two shirt layers that I'm missing? What just happened there? I don't know. But here we go. Okay, fine. I'll is that Henry typing or Olga? Do you type like a mad genius too? Olga left. Oh, what happened? You, you've offended her already. 
<laughs> I'm like, I just started. <laughs> oh, God, come back. <laughs> I heard trap, trap, pa -tap, pa -tap, pa -tap, pa -tap. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I was like, Is, do I have another? It's just... a problem with my micro. It was like, she abandoned me. Okay. So make sure that your layers of fabric are actually sitting on one, on top of one another, you know, because there's not that kind of airspace in between them. Um, first thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you did a good job of making this look like it's kind of pinching together. That's a good call. Looks good. Your fabric wrinkles are convincing. You know, they're in the right place and look good. Yeah, see how this is floating off the back? Just move. Just make sure that... Mm. Did these come from Marvelous Designer? Marvelous has a way of making one-sided polygons that makes me nuts. Failure, Tomas. Okay, fine. Goodness gracious. So these are only one-sided, so that's where some of this problem is coming from. So if that had thickness, right, that would be fine. It's just I keep seeing the air spaces, and the air spaces are throwing me off. Throwing me off. Now, let's look at our face here. Actually, he has plenty of depth. That's interesting. His face looks a lot flatter from the front. Why is that? Mm. Maybe it is. Let me see here. Okay, why is that not working? Okay, there we go. <laughs> like, for some reason, I'm not sculpting. I think he's carrying a lot of fat on his face. I think that that scooping in might look a little anemic. And that was, oh. Stop, 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 stop. Turn Sculptures Pro off. Okay. Well, I think this might have something to do with what's throwing me off about his face here. Because from the front, all of a sudden, his face looks super flat. And um, his flate, he's not. He has plenty of depth to his face. So, yeah, I think that might have something to do with it. All right, let's just get a little bit more fat in there. Mm -hmm. And then that can be, you see what I mean? See how that fills his face out just a touch more? Because that's not a scoop. That's... You know, he's carrying fat. And I think same thing here. This would be just a little bit puffier. Oh, come on, give me that lip. Mm. Low poly modelers. <laughs> And I remove in my smoothing, 
I lost a little bit of that definition, which can definitely go back in. But um, I think that is giving him a, a slightly plumper face. I think his, his lip here just got a little anemic there. Right. I think maybe once again. Hmm. Touch my eye. <laughs> I love it when I have things what? in my eye and I burn my retinas out every time I touch my eye. Um, what's that? I don't want uh, uh, my model cr crush your eyes. <laughs> oh no 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 no! It's <laughs> I I touch things around here and then I touch my eyes and it's like ah. <laughs> um, no no no! Nothing to do with your model. <laughs> I think this intersection's a little high. Like I think it's probably down in here a little more. And all right. okay. But see how he has meat here now? And like he just has a little bit because you have this, right? And he's with this little pouch here. Just like me. A great white shark. It's just a straight line from here to your chest. Um so you're implying that he's carrying a little extra weight. Mm -hmm. And so when you scooped out his upper lip, here, let's go back and look. Let's duplicate. And let's take you back. Come on, where are you? We're going to take it back to the beginning here. I should really duplicate these when I first start so we can just go back and look at the original model without me having to wait for it to go through 200 stroke history. <laughs> All right. So, and I understand this is to imply the weight, right? I think these being deep are implying the weight, right? But it's really scoopy and poochy. <clears throat> And I think if you put the weight in there and then, you know, you can come back in and like I said, I smooth some of that out. You can come back in and imply the weight there. It just looks like he's carrying the weight, right? Because this is going to get fat as well. You're not just going to have a really thin up. Well, I'm sure there are plenty of fat people with thin upper lips, but, <laughs> um, you know, I think that here we go. I feel like I am earning stock in this company, but let's go to anatomy for sculptors. And he has this. Yeah, here you go. Um, where'd it go? No, I want the full picture. Damn it, Jim. Um, there's a bigger picture of this out there, but you can see how she's putting on weight and where she's putting the weight on control plus oh you don't have a keyboard never mind control plus you have a keyboard yeah control plus right. so i think that we got a little scoopy in there well here let's see if we can give him his little ducky lip <laughs> and punch that, punch that. Yeah, I think he was missing some of this fat in here. Right, that was just a nice smooth line. And I 
mean, his profile's good. This just seems a little caved in to me. Like if we're looking here, and it's, what's funny is it's really not that caved in. I don't know why this reflective surface is throwing me off. It just makes it look super thin where I'm looking for these reflections, you know? Um, so I might be wrong. <laughs> I've been wrong before. I'll accept it. <laughs> There's just the reflectivity wise, this because of how the angle here is scooping this way, right? It makes this look sort of like a ducky lip, but he's pretty beefy, right? And it just seems like that ducky uh -huh. lip is removing the beefiness for me, where if you fill it out and then you can come in and, you know, this can get, you know, as dramatic as you want it. But I just feel that ducky lip was really, the reflection of that was really bothering me as far as um, just how it's reading. I think just giving him a little bit more meat in there makes the reflection kind of come back in. And um, it's just a better reflective line. Now, if you're painting it, you know, that might not be the issue. And I'm always giving you suggestions for printing, not necessarily, you know, rendering or anything like that. So you're pro you could just paint over that and no one in the world's ever gonna see it. And I could be wrong. But I just think he looks a little beefier there. And I mean, I changed the expression and things like that. You know, obviously you can come back in and make this the same expression. But I don't know. What do you think? I could be wrong on this one. <laughs> Smoothing back out. Yeah. Because it's so funny. He looks so flat from this angle. And he's really not. He has plenty of depth. He looks great here. I do think that, once again, if you have that fat roll, it doesn't just stop. There'd be a smaller one here. Right, it would continue on down the neck, carrying that weight. It's just weird. It has something to do with my light source or something. Because I keep looking at him from the front, and I'm like, he's got a really flat face. Boom. He doesn't have a very flat face. Yeah, I think just beefing up that upper lip and kind of um, getting some of this meat in, right? A little bit of this weight here and then these guys um, lend itself to some of that beefiness get that extra wrinkle in down here so it doesn't just stop right there just get a couple more of those little turkey fleshy things happening on the neck it looks great do you have any questions of my silly back and forth nonsense no questions <laughs> very helpful thank you <laughs> maybe he need uh more cakes to be more right fat I, in front <laughs> yeah i think i think he needs just a, a couple more cakes i think that would solve it as long as they're good fatty cakes you know <laughs> no he looks good it's it's so funny how when you look at something from one angle and then at the other and it's just not the same thing you're like what what is that about what is that about?
Yeah. It's so weird. I don't know what is... I mean, like I said, there's plenty of depth in that face. And every time I look at it from the front, I'm like, well, his face is really flat. And it's not. I think it's just my material or the reflectivity of this material. That's... Mm, maybe. Yeah, because see there, it doesn't look flat. It's just that material, bizarre. I can't see any detail. You need to come in here and sculpt some detail. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> the wonderful world of materials. That'll do it for you. <laughs> no, I'd say all in all, you know, it looks great. The the two things, hey, you know, plump up the face a touch here or there, maybe. But I think that um, you may want to thicken your material or double it. Because this seems, are these, hold on, come on, there you go. Does that have a double side or is this, oh no, you have double turned on. Yeah, these are single layers, right? Like that collar is a single layer. Well, no, it has a back. They just look single layer, it's really funny. See, that one doesn't have, this one's a single layer, it doesn't have a back, it has no thickness. Um, I think that it would help you if you thicken these out to where um, it's, it's not a single layer. And that will give some of this stuff, like it'll allow this to rest on the body as opposed to float up and off the body. And I don't know why I can't. Okay, we're going to select you, control tap. But some of this is double. And then this is single. Or am I just completely out of my mind? Nope, see, that side doesn't have thickness to it. How did you make this? Did you just mm. sculpt this on? Or did you use like... Um, uh, Marac or marvelous? No, no, sc sc sculpt in the brush. Oh, really? Yes. I'm just wondering how you got that without a back. Somehow or another, you lost the thickness on that part of that collar. And I think that's what's bothering me here is because, um, let's get back to this. Um, like, I don't know how you achieve like unless it was a different poly group and somehow you got rid of the back poly group. Um, and once again, I'm the when I'm talking about this, I am expressly talking about for printing, right? I mean, like on rendering or if you're trying to do toy ass or game assets and stuff. I don't know that these are necessarily issues, but um, if I come up here and let's mask this off. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to do that. Because when you're dealing with a 3D object, um, or something you're bringing out of the machine, right? Uh, let me hide this real quick. Mm, let me do this first. I'm just going to quickly draw a line right here. Okay. Boop. Hide part. Mm, clay tubes. I'm just going to fill this up a little. Come on. Actually, let's just use clay build up. It'll happen quicker this way. <laughs> C 
so we have this column, right? Mm -hmm. And here it's just floating, right? And you can see this flat edge and it's just kind of floating there. Where if we come back here and I have a nice edge and I know that this is two different surfaces and that's going to read like poo, but I think the ideal will come across. And we're just going to slide, slide that. And I'm not going to be able to get that super flat because, like I said, this isn't actually touching there. But let's do this. Do this. And so now when we're looking back here, right, we get that reflective face, right? That's mm -hmm. giving us thickness to that part. Where here, you're only getting this like little half roll, right? And in here, see how you're only getting these little half edge rolls? Where if that's solid and you're getting a nice face off of this surface, it becomes a really nice reflective face. And that really helps sell um, the intersections where something passes over one another, right? This is distinctly on top of that. And you have it here, right? I mean, this is fine. You're doing it here because this is sculpted. Somehow or another, these became just single surfaces and they just float a lot. And it just reads from a distance, like you get this nice reflective surface. You get this nice reflective surface, which is telling the story of this material thickness. And in a sculpture, you don't need these to be physically in scale, the thickness that they are in real life. It's better to have the signifiers of those interactions, right? Because mm -hmm. um, you're, it gives you a little bit more room to, because see, this is like this really thin floppy surface and then it goes back to this and you're like, well, what's going on there? Where here, there's absolutely no question of what's going on, right? You have this is a reflective surface. This is now going back and under that. And right, none of this is thin, so you're getting these nice, flat, reflective planes, which are telling the story of what's going over and under. I understand. Yeah, so I think that that's what... Right, you know, this is a very clear relationship of what's happening. And then when you get into these very thin things, it just looks sort of floaty and wispy. And so that material doesn't have the weight or substance in the sculpt. I think that's what I'm looking at there. Because you have, I mean, like your fabric's really nice. It's tight. Your curves are, you know, your fabric is realistic enough to view it as, oh, look, this is pinching and this has weight. And, you know, your fabric's nice and you're getting it good. You just want it, like this wanted to touch on this. This, you know, now can react to being laid upon. Right? And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I just think that these surfaces are just really super thick. You see how that's floating off of the body there? Your brain catches that, right? Your brain sees that there's airspace under there. So what's going on? And um, yeah, I think that's the only issues. He looks great okay. though. Two thumbs up. Thank looks you. Wonderful. Very helpful. Good. I'm glad. You're like, you're <laughs> I'm good too. <laughs> like, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Just be quiet. <laughs> yeah, no. Good, good. Any questions or anything? No, no, any question. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I love it with it. I struggle that my eye sees something. I'm like, what is it? And I struggle on it. It was rough. I was rough on Tomas. It was rough. It was hard it was on rough him. On. See, but that just makes more sense. Visually. Uh, 
I think the the better the model is, the harder you have pinpointing what it is that is just a teeny bit off for you. Yeah, there's there well there are subtle things that my subconscious is catching. And sometimes I have to try to figure it out cuz like, you know, I don't sculpt in layers like this. Like I would like I wouldn't build fabric on top of things. I just sculpt it on. So I don't get floating surfaces, right? Cuz I never have them. And so it's mm -hmm. sort of like trying to identify what my brain is seeing. I'm like, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Who's next? Um, let's answer uh, two questions, questions real quick. Yeah. Um, Mulf TV wanted to know, is there a good way to get a C curve or S curve along a hard surface? Uh, and I don't know if C curves and F curves are a specific thing. Hmm. All right. So first of all, let's just get a hard surface. Just a smooth curve. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, let me. I'm just reading what they're typing. <laughs> All right. So, boom. And so let's turn this on. Let's see this. I'm just. Stop. No. I don't want to save. My poor drive doesn't have enough room to be saving all this stuff. <laughs> all right. Z modeler. Bump, 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 bump. And now let's do this because I have a feeling this is what you're talking about. Bump, 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 bump. And now I'm going to, uh, here, I'll just cheese this out a little move and we are going to do infinite Z. Uh, draw size, let's make this a little bigger. One. And we're gonna, oh, wow. I don't know why my scale's all wonky all of a sudden. And we're going to kind of make an S. What is up with that? See how that stops? Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Do not know. All right, so we've got our hard surfaces. We kind of have some S curves here. And I want to retain my hard surfaces, so I'm going to crease. Crease, edge loop complete, boom, crease there, crease there, and crease there. Is that everybody? Let's crease there, and crease there. And now we're going to divide this, divide, 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 divide. But you want a specific smooth curve, or let's say, let's put some dents in this because you've moved it and so it's not a great curve something like that is that what we're talking about uh yeah they did say like after you use the move brush yes okay so you have these lumpy curves this is a wonderful place for lazy nazumi so you make your curve you get your curve in you put it around and then you take your pinch brush and you can come in and pinch along a specific curve. And so you don't need lazy Nazumi. You can come back in and pinch um, by hand, right? And you can kind of clean it up. And then, you know, you can just smooth in between here. But the nice thing about lazy Nazumi is you can set complex curves and, um, right, we're going to drag that up there. We're going to rotate that out. Get it there. Come in. Rotate that guy around. 
bring it down. Scoop. Do 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 do. Do. No. No. And so you can see, I want to move. I'm going to turn this off for a second. Going to move this down. It's pretty close, so let's turn this off. I have now come in here and I have moved this down. And I think this was down a little more. Uh, something like that. Come in get my lazy nazumi fairly close and then i can use pinch and lazy nazumi will yank it to that curve is a huge brush so i'm doing really destructive stuff here and then i'm going to come here trim front and that took it to that curve um oops and then yeah. is that kind of what you were talking about yep and they have lazy nizumi they've just forgot about it <laughs> just forgot about my lazy nizumi <laughs> don't forget about lazy nizumi so I think lazy nizumi is a great tool for coming in. If you have a very specific curve that you need hit, I think lazy nizumi is a really good tool for it. Uh, next question: How do you decimate hair? Um, you mean? And this is uh, Cinna asking, which I think their model had. Yeah. I forget. I forget what you call that, but like ZBrush hair, uh, not fiber. open hair. Fiber. fiber. All right. That'll yeah. be rough. Well, here's how you do it. Um, see, the problem is, is that you've used an insanely small fiber. So the first thing you want to do is use fiber that's like 50 times bigger than this. If you don't, and this is what you have, how we figured it out is if you come in and you inflate this stuff, and I don't know if this poor little machine is going to be able to deal with this, so we're going to try it. So you can see I'm inflating these fibers. And you can see if you're using bigger fibers, you don't get so much chatter. I'm just going to hit it. I'm not going to be super concerned about keeping the hair exact because once again, to be fair, your fibers are really too small to do this well, but you can change your fiber thickness. And then once you get your fibers kind of blown out, Kyle, you're really just hammering on that Cintiq. That yeah. poor thing. <laughs> Isn't that what you do to your Cintiq? No, it's certainly not, because I remember how much I paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you implying that I don't respect my equipment? <laughs> well, I'm implying that perhaps you know its limitations better than I do. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not doing crap to this thing. And you got a new one. It's even a tougher surface. Now we go to W. And we come in here and we go remesh by Dynamesh. And we make this really low. And then it's going to sit here and spin. Boop. And that gives you a solid object. Now, let's give it a little more geometry than that. But you can see that if you're using fewer, or if you're using bigger um, fibers, fibers. Um, 
this process, you know, these can actually look really nice, you know. And then this gives you the rhythm for coming in and, um, you know, being able to come in and decide where your break points are and what's important and get the rhythm of the hair. But with the hair being so small, you get, or with the fibers being so small, you wind up getting a lot of chatter. So um, if you plan on using it for a print, use fatter fibers and then half the time you don't need to inflate them you know you can just come in and boop and now this gives you a foundation for the rhythm of the hair and you can come back and sculpt on this a little bit more but that's how you do it da, 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 da. magic all right uh miko miko who is in chat but not in voice Oh, I see how she is. Or he, you don't know. Oh, or he, fair enough. <laughs> what do I know? Nothing. <laughs> now, see, you did a great job of, um, like we were talking about the hair earlier, where he started to crisscross and lose definition because they were interlacing and not making sense you simplified the forms and really kept them in an order and that helps a lot shape of the head's really nice and i like how you retained a good anatomical form of the head even though you're blowing the uh, eyes out right um now see if you had seen the Abraham winkin episode <laughs> Um, you would have known. So if we come in here and you move, you know, it's kind of like a sneer, the little raised lip. Well, remember that this is a whole set of muscles. It's, you can't just raise your lip. I guess they're the people, what you can raise your eyebrow without moving all your, any of your other muscles in your face. Hold on, let's try. <laughs> so usually what you want to do is if you're doing a characterized, like sneer or something like that and this is already up so normally i would start here and move whoa <laughs> not do that um move the whole thing and so we're getting some motion there but remember that your face is pliable and when you're doing something like this this is rising up you actually get a slight tilt to the nose and then you know you get a little peak up here and you know that whole thing of like you can tell a sociopath because he smiles and it doesn't go to their eyes, right? Because they're just like, and it's because only this is happening. You're like, you know, you're smiling, but you're not sincere. I can't do it. <laughs> I'm sitting here making faces. <laughs> um, goodness gracious, that's silly. Um, ooh. Right, you'd get a little bit more meat kind of peeking up here and just giving that just a touch more right these things are kind of gathering let's get it back smooth and you see how it makes the face not symmetrical because well you've just made it not symmetrical by sneering and it's hard to do it after you moved it, you know, because normally, like I said, if you're here and you move all the, <laughs> you really need the right brush. But if you're doing it, you have a big brush and you're moving it all at once. You can see what's happening there where this has already been done. So I'm kind of trying to get it to work. And it's a little trickier to do once you've already done it. <laughs> I'm so not used to changing brushes. Ye of the, <laughs> the one brush sculptor here. Does that make sense? 
and I think hopefully you can see that it's easier if you start let's say we'll do it on this side right um, and see that's giving you the cheek compression already and it's raising the nose and now you come back in and obviously renormalize it but that's giving you a slightly more realistic idea of what's happening when that meat's moving and remember the eye moves up some right so you're getting that the whole face moves when you're you know making facial expression so i think start straight and then sneer you know get the sneer in there move that up that's going to move that up and kind of get the whole expression going let's get rid of some of that because that looks like goofiness and that would break your symmetry just a touch and but just get some of that moving up on that side and if you really want to push it like getting the chin to move over and you know you're just kind of moving the whole face up if that makes any sense I know I'm not being super careful there but Let's turn on the light see what you're doing Yeah, she looks great. Am I right? Is it supposed to be a sneer? I'm reading fear with the paint on, but I read sneer with the paint off. Yeah, it's sneer. <laughs> and you see that it just doesn't travel to the eyes, right? Look. Oh. <laughs> I love when I do that. I put my hand over it. See? <laughs> See what happens when you remove the eyes? Right, you know, you're getting a little bit more of the expression there. I still think that you could kind of kick this over and punch this up some. And even just moving that, you see how much more expressive that is? Because it's actually traveling with the face. But you get none of the transition into the eyes. Even just moving it that little bit, do you see how I moved up into the eye? So let's mask that and just move that up just a touch. And I think it sneers a little bit more dramatic in here. But, you know, see here, I mean, look at how much the cheek, see how his eyes starting to close. <laughs> see how they're implying a little bit, the eyes a little bit more closed. <laughs> There's some real dorks. That's not sneering. That's buffoonery. Cheney, Cheney sneered like a pro. But you can see that the eyes closing up this cheeks deeper his chins rotating right you're getting sort of that some of these aren't very sneery for sneer they're probably last named yeah, more and sneer funeral. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah you sneer. spelled it wrong, so it's oh, coming up. With, yeah. <laughs> All right. So I can't spell. 
There we go. See how his eyes swell up and... <laughs> Yeah, the implication of the cheek, the eyes higher. <laughs> ah, good old Billy Idol. <laughs> the king of the sneer. Nice day for a sneer wedding, yeah. Yeah, see how much the cheek is pinching up? So I would say, yeah, here, right up. See how the nose is tilting? <laughs> the Google machine is so funny. All right. So yeah, I think that um, getting that cheek in there. And getting a little bit of that eye closure. Nose tilt just a tad. See, does that look sneerier? <laughs> I know that I completely changed the shape of your eyeball there, but. And I would even probably bring the brow down just a touch. A little more sneery. No, symmetry on is bad. Bad, bad sculptor. Bad symmetry. Did that help at all? <laughs> they said, um, yep, a lot of help. <laughs> okay. It's a great model. It's a lot of fun. All right. Do I have infinite on? Man, I love when I have things on. I'm like, all of a sudden, she's getting these lumps in her back. I'm like, what the hell happened? You had such a nice shaped head. Is there someone next? There is not. Woohoo! I kicked you all early. Boom! <laughs> so does anyone have any just generalized questions they'd like? Because to be deadly honest, I wouldn't mind getting out of here before two when all of a sudden the entire rest of the world opens up and we get questions until four. <laughs> <laughs> like It's good because things tend to slump right here, like that 1230 to one. Mm -hmm. And then like the 130 to two, I don't know who it is, but it's a time slot that people start watching elsewhere. And yep. uh, all of a sudden we go from nothing to like 17 models. It's like, oh. Uh... And... My assistant, my lovely assistant. <laughs> I'm going to pull my lovely assistant out of a box and saw him in half. Um, <laughs> uh, has things to do. So we'll do uh, some Q&A if there is any Q&A. And if not, we'll call it early. Sorry, you're going to have to be... Uh, on top of that one, because I, I still, it's random if I see these things. Nothing so far. All right. You know, I'm glad my profile isn't horrifying, because I tend to look sideways a lot in this game. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs>
<laughs> I want to know why when you read chat, OBS opens up. Well, because chat. Okay, because here. Look. Let me get it. So this is my chat window in OBS. And see, it gives me everybody, uh, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. the second that I minimize OBS, um, it becomes inactive. And it says, oh, new chat, right? It says new messages. And so how I used to do this and when I was using the Wacom or my my new Wacom sure. uh -huh. is that it's I could take engine. this, I could bring this over here, do this, and then do come on do this and do this and then see i could have this open but right. it's it's not on a different screen so it yeah. stays active and you had 4K then, so you had a lot more UI to work with. On right, no, thing. exactly. But this just compresses my UI to... Okay, so we need to make you a, a transparent chat. That, yeah, I don't know how to do that. Yeah, I know. But we can do that. Okay. I know there's a place you can do that, because I used to do that, but we'll have to work on that next week. <laughs> next yeah. week, we'll try for a, you know, one day... Because we did just put down a deposit. One mm -hmm. day, I'll have real internet, and I can do this from home. Woohoo! And then I'll do. I'll totally forget that I'm working on my computer, and I'll do things that no other human in the world can do, and crash everyone's computers. Um. All right. So hold on. We got that. Boop. Okay. Anyone? Questions? Answers? We can look at my computer again if you want. <laughs> I will see enough of it later, I'm sure. Uh, uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna be doing some um, videos that ZBrush is gonna use. We're gonna do some how-to videos, and that's gonna be fun. Uh, I can't see anything. Anything? Nope. Right. Um, next week is going to be a, another crit stream. Yep. And so then, between now and next Monday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Upload, upload. Up. Yep. ZTL, 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 ZTL. And then the second week of the month, I'm going to do the theme sculpts. So I don't know what next week, next year. Mm. I can't talk. Mm. I think we're going to do, I think leprechauns are definitely something that's in there. Mm -hmm. um, they have a few other options, but who knows what they're going to pick as a theme. Do you like to retopologize in ZBrush? Well, they've made retopologizing a dream now. Well, at least for me. Um, like retopology for gaming and things like that's a different, it's a different thing, but, um, the Z remeshing tools are just so awesome. The algorithms are so tight and you can get tricky and use paint. So you have more geometry in certain areas and the fact that you can keep creases and keep groups. And I love it. I use it on almost every model every time. So I, I, am very happy and content with the um, Z remeshing tools. They make me joyful. See? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I just looked up and ZBrush sort of did a little, the little logo under me, did like a little, 
a little star sprinkle when I said yay. It was very nice. I wish we could train it to do that. <laughs> you know what? No I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> so, you know, like the ZBrush logo underneath me on Twitch? No. What There's nothing that? underneath you on Twitch. Yeah, there is. It says Pixelogic, Sculpting 3D Printing and ZBrush 2021. Oh, I'm in, I'm in mod view. Oh. Um, That's probably different. That had a little animation with a star that... What what do stars do? Sparkled up or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right when I went, yay. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> but I don't have my little subtitle. I do have to... Remind me we have to dig that up. Because I do have them. For some reason, somewhere when I updated obs or switched to this computer i didn't put them up there i suck that's all right yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's all good it's all good all right if there are no more questions we are probably going to wrap this up at a mere four hours and 41 minutes i feel like i'm an underachiever I oh feel man bad. what a failure I know. I, I, I kind of feel bad about it. You streamed for a perfectly reasonable amount of time, and that yeah. is unacceptable. I know. I feel that's. It needs to be an unreasonably long amount of time. It does. It does. <laughs> <laughs> or I feel like I've I've. Uh, I feel like an underachiever or something. I, don't know. <laughs> I feel bad about myself. I'm, I'm losing self esteem for only streaming for five hours. Oh no. You do realize that as soon as we can stream from home, I'll probably start streaming a lot. And I'll probably not join you <laughs> for a ton of it. <laughs> what? You'll love it. Just every day, just streaming what I'm working on. Yeah. When my wife can... comes in, hey, I haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. Do you, <laughs> do you remember me? <laughs> so the I question won't remember is... how to talk. <laughs> How do I stream me recording videos? <laughs> it's, I think we should stream me editing videos. Send, that's behind the scenes YouTube stuff. Me sitting there cussing at every time I say um in a video. <laughs> um, so, ah, mm, <coughs> ah, mm, uh, so, uh, hmm, ah, uh, hmm, uh, so then, now, um, yeah, no. My editing of videos is the most uncompelling thing in the world. Thank God Eric is here. Because the, by the time I've just removed all that garbage and kind of got the story told, I'm just like, just get it out of my face. I hate this video. <laughs> He's like, I really love these. It's like, yeah, you got you got it without the... Uh, mm, uh, 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 <laughs> Bailey's talk! <laughs> Oh my God. I can't tell you how many recordings I have of Lee screaming up the stairs saying Bailey's time. It's so funny. It's good stuff. <laughs> All right. Well, it seems that I have come to <laughs> an end of the stream. <laughs> so long. Farewell. Farewell. <laughs> I'll feed us in goodbye. Yeah, we don't need me singing. You know, just remind me, there's one thing that we never need videos of me doing. Singing. Or dancing. That's something okay. we don't need. We'll get Tony to handle those. Yeah, I think we, you're, you're right. I think that's a perfect, a perfect solution. Will you text him and inform him that he is yeah. going to be the singer and dancer in the group? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Got it. Somehow I know what his response is going to be, but um... yeah, I have a feeling that it's not going to show up on YouTube. Let's put it that. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, okay, everybody, uh, get your copy of ZBrush if you don't have one, or if you're new to it, get a trial. Um, link is in chat. Tomas has his own teaching platform. Um, one membership gets you access to every single video he's made for the platform. There's over a hundred videos so far. We specialize in making jewelry and ZBrush for now. For now, um, yeah. That but really, to, uh, everything more that we stuff later. Everything we teach is applicable for three D printing. How it's really all about taking models from ZBrush and learning how to print them. Manufacturing. But, but at this point, it is um, all jewelry. 
But I have a feeling that we're going to do some toy stuff next year and maybe some miniature stuff because I did hand sculpt miniatures for Ralph Partha and Citadel and uh, I think that from what I've seen of miniature sculpting we could discuss some stuff with that yep but really oh, if, yep, manufacturing if you sign up for his um, for the newsletter uh, on zbrushworkshop.com you'll get his UI which you can see on the screen now uh, my materials yeah materials brushes I think there's a video about scale, isn't there? The scale yep. video. Yep, free video about scale in ZBrush. Yep. It's all kinds of stuff, free stuff. And we do have free videos up right oh, now yeah. about ZBrush Mini and ZBrush Core. Core and Core Mini, yeah. Yeah, and actually Eric did a spectacular job with those. They're really informative. And if so if you can't or don't want to afford ZBrush, there is, or the full ZBrush, there's ZBrush Mini, which is free. And Eric created a Dumbo octopus ring. And it's great. I mean, it's a wonderful finished piece made in Mini. And then there's Core. Or was it made in Core? I don't know. I, I, I want to say it was made in Core. And the Dragonfly was made in Mini? He made some mini. I know he has. I think the flower was mini. I think there was a flower in mini, and then a dragonfly, and the octopus ring in core. I feel really bad because I don't get to see a lot of these videos because at home I can't download. Them. <laughs> have no I have the worst internet in the world. Literally, the other day we had wor worse than dial-up. It was point oh four. I mean, that's like substantially below dial-up. Wasn't dial up 52 two? I don't and then like 74 4, if I remember correctly. Spring, whoop, weep. I ding, was ding, ding, too ding, young. Ding, ding, <laughs> yeah. I was out of college. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. It's been wonderful. Right. I'm glad you could join us. Hopefully, you will join us again next week. Same time, same bat place. Um, yeah. Thanks, ZBrush, for letting us stream. Check out Mini and Core if you um, want a very affordable solution to at least experiment and play with ZBrush. And yeah. We'll see you next time. Oh, join the Discord. Oh, join Discord. If, yeah. if you've got questions, you know, we've got a, a, an awesome group of people on there all the time to, to help. Yep. Discord's a good one. I never understood Discord, but Henry showed me the light. It's good, man. It's the future. I'm all about Discord. It's good stuff. All right, kind and gentle folk. It has been a lovely week. I only went... You, you can see what I'm doing, right? I'm postponing trying to get five hours of streaming in so I don't feel like a total jerk. Is that what's but, happening? Four hours and 40? <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and banter with you for 12 minutes. All Hang right. it up. I'm totally lying. That was a total joke. I'm done. Here we go. Thanks, everyone. And uh, we will see you next week.